In the heart of a bustling city stood an enormous structure, a labyrinth of furniture and home decor known as Ikea. With its winding aisles and maze-like layout, it was easy to get lost amidst the sea of shelves and displays. For Sarah and Jack, a young couple in search of a new bookshelf, Ikea seemed like the perfect place to spend their Saturday afternoon. As they stepped into the vast showroom, the scent of wood and furniture polish enveloped them. Jack glanced at the map provided at the entrance, feeling confident that they could navigate through the store without any trouble. Sarah, however, couldn't shake off a sense of unease that settled over her like a shroud. Are you sure we'll find our way back? She asked, her voice tinged with apprehension. Jack chuckled, squeezing her hand reassuringly. Don't worry, babe, we'll stick together, and besides, getting lost in Ikea is part of the adventure, right? Sarah managed a weak smile, though her nerves remained on edge. They started their journey through the showroom, admiring the displays of cozy living rooms and sleek kitchen setups. The aisles stretched endlessly before them, each one branching off into a myriad of directions. Time seemed to warp within the confines of the store, minutes stretching into hours as they wandered deeper into the maze of furniture. Sarah couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, the sensation of eyes boring into her back. She cast nervous glances over her shoulder, half expecting to see someone lurking in the shadows. Jack noticed her unease and wrapped his arm around her shoulders, offering what little comfort he could. Hey, it's okay. We're in this together, remember? Sarah nodded, grateful for his presence as they pressed on, determined to find the perfect bookshelf. But as they turned another corner, Sarah's heart skipped a beat. Standing at the end of the aisle were two men, their figures ominous in the lighting of the showroom. Did you see that? Sarah whispered, her voice barely audible over the hum of conversation around them. Jack squinted, trying to make out the men in the distance. I don't see anything. Maybe it's just other shoppers. But Sarah wasn't convinced. The men seemed to exude an aura of menace, their eyes following their every move as they approached. They quickened their pace, eager to put some distance between themselves and the potential threat. As they ventured deeper into the store, Sarah couldn't shake off the feeling of being followed. Every time she glanced behind her, she half expected to see the two men stalking them through the aisles. Her nerves were frayed, her heart pounding in her chest with each passing moment. We should find an employee and ask for directions, Sarah suggested, her voice trembling with anxiety. Jack nodded, agreeing that it was probably the best course of action. But as they searched for a staff member, they found themselves alone in the deserted aisles, the sound of their footsteps echoing ominously against the polished floors. Where is everyone? Sarah muttered, her voice barely above a whisper. Jack frowned, his brow furrowing in confusion. I don't know, it's like everyone disappeared. They continued their search, their footsteps growing more urgent as they sought out any sign of life amidst the vast emptiness of the showroom. But the more they searched, the more it seemed like they were the only ones left in the store. Just when they were about to give up hope, they stumbled upon a narrow corridor hidden behind a display of bookcases. It was lit, the flickering fluorescent lights casting shadows on the walls. Sarah hesitated, her instincts screaming at her to turn back, but Jack forged ahead, his curiosity getting the better of him. Let's see where this leads, he said, his voice filled with a sense of adventure. Reluctantly, Sarah followed, her heart pounding in her chest as they ventured deeper into the darkness. The corridor seemed to stretch on endlessly, twisting and turning like a serpent as it led them further away from the safety of the main showroom. Just when Sarah thought they couldn't go any further, they stumbled upon a small room tucked away at the end of the corridor, the fluorescent lights casting shadows on the walls. But what caught their attention was the two men standing in the center of the room, their faces obscured by the darkness. Hello? Jack called out, his voice echoing in the silence. The men didn't respond, their forms remaining still as they stood in the center of the room. Sarah felt a chill run down her spine, her instincts screaming at her to run, but she couldn't tear her eyes away from the figures. Maybe they need help, Jack said, taking a hesitant step forward. But before he could approach any further, the men turned around, revealing faces twisted into sinister grins. Sarah gasped, her heart lurching in her chest as she realized the true nature of their intent. Before they could react, the men lunged forward, their movements swift and predatory. Sarah screamed the sound echoing in the small room as they scrambled to escape. 
but the men were faster, their grips like vices as they dragged them into the darkness. As Sarah and Jack struggled against the firm grasp of the men, panic surged through their veins. They fought with all their strength, clawing and kicking in a desperate attempt to break free, but the men's hold remained unyielding. With each passing moment, the grip of terror tightened around their hearts, squeezing out any hope of escape. Let us go, Sarah screamed, her voice echoing off the walls of the lit room. But her pleas fell on deaf ears as the men dragged them further into the darkness, their laughter echoing in the empty space around them. Sarah's mind raced with fear-fueled thoughts, her senses overwhelmed by the oppressive weight of their captivity. Jack's muscles strained against the iron grip of their captors, his mind racing as he searched for any means of escape. But the room seemed devoid of any exit, the walls closing in around them. With nowhere left to run, they huddled together, their bodies trembling with fear as the men loomed over them like predators closing in for the kill. Please don't hurt us, Jack pleaded, his voice trembling with desperation. But the men's grins only widened, their eyes gleaming with malice as they advanced upon their helpless victims. And as their hands closed around Sarah and Jack's throats, their screams were drowned out by the laughter that echoed through the darkness. Hours passed as Sarah and Jack were subjected to unspeakable horrors at the hands of their captors. Their cries for help went unanswered, their hopes of rescue fading with each passing moment. And as the darkness consumed them, they knew that their fate was sealed within the labyrinth. But just as all hope seemed lost, a glimmer of light pierced through the darkness, casting a ray of hope upon their shattered souls. With renewed determination, they fought against their tormentors, their will to survive burning brighter than ever before. And in a final act of defiance, they broke free from the clutches of their captors, their bodies battered and bruised, but their spirits unbroken. With every ounce of strength they could muster, they fled into the unknown, leaving behind the horrors of Ikea's labyrinth far behind them. As they emerged into the light of day, their hearts filled with gratitude for their newfound freedom. Though scarred by their ordeal, they knew that they had triumphed over the darkness that had threatened to consume them. And as they walked hand in hand into the embrace of the sunlit world beyond, they vowed to never forget the horrors they had faced within the labyrinth. Story 2 in the heart of the bustling city, surrounded by towering buildings and endless streams of traffic, stood the imposing structure of Ikea. Inside its vast expanse, customers roamed like ants in search of crumbs, navigating through the maze of furniture and home goods. Among them was Lily, a young woman with a friendly smile and a diligent work ethic, who spent her days toiling away in the aisles of the megastore. Lily had been working at Ikea for several years now finding solace in the routine of stacking shelves and assisting customers with their purchases. She enjoyed the sense of camaraderie among her co-workers, the shared laughter and inside jokes that made the long hours bearable. But beneath her cheerful demeanor, Lily harbored a sense of unease, a feeling that something sinister lurked beneath the fluorescent lights and polished surfaces of Ikea. It wasn't until the arrival of their new manager, Mr. Thompson, that Lily's unease turned to outright dread. From the moment he stepped foot into the store, there was something off about him, a darkness that seemed to cloud his every move. His piercing gaze sent shivers down Lily's spine, his smile lacking warmth as he greeted his new employees. Despite her misgivings, Lily tried to push aside her doubts and focus on her work. But as the weeks passed, Mr. Thompson's behavior grew increasingly erratic, his temper flaring at the slightest provocation. Lily watched in silence as he berated employees and belittled customers, his outbursts leaving a trail of tension in his wake. It wasn't long before rumors began to circulate about Mr. Thompson's troubled past, whispers of a dark secret that he carried with him like a weight around his neck. Lily tried to ignore the gossip, but the nagging feeling of unease only grew stronger with each passing day. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to Mr. Thompson than met the eye that beneath his polished exterior lurked a darkness that threatened to consume them all. One fateful afternoon, as Lily was taking inventory in the storage room, she overheard snippets of conversation between Mr. Thompson and another employee. Their voices were hushed, their words barely audible above the hum of the ventilation system. But what Lily heard sent a chill down her spine, a revelation that shattered her illusions of safety. He can't know, Mr. Thompson whispered, 
his voice filled with desperation. We have to make sure he never finds out. Lily's heart raced as she pieced together the fragments of their conversation, her mind reeling with the implications of what she had heard. It was then that she realized the true extent of Mr. Thompson's dark past, a secret so horrifying that it threatened to tear apart the fragile facade of normalcy that surrounded them. As Lily struggled to come to terms with the truth, she felt a presence looming behind her, a shadow cast by the darkness that had engulfed her world. She turned to find Mr. Thompson standing in the doorway, his eyes burning with intensity. Did you hear everything? He asked, his voice cold and devoid of emotion. Lily's heart pounded in her chest as she struggled to find her voice. She wanted to run, to escape the suffocating grip of Mr. Thompson's presence, but she knew that there was no hiding from the truth. With a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach, she nodded silently, her eyes wide with fear. Mr. Thompson's lips curled into a twisted smile as he stepped closer, his presence filling the room like a suffocating fog. Lily backed away, her mind racing as she searched for a means of escape, but there was nowhere left to run. She was trapped, caught in the clutches of a darkness that threatened to consume her whole. And as Mr. Thompson's true nature was laid bare before her, Lily knew that she was facing a horror beyond anything she had ever imagined. She could feel the darkness closing in around her, its tendrils reaching out to claim her soul as she stood frozen in terror. In that moment, Lily realized that she was not alone in her suffering, that others had fallen victim to the malevolent force that lurked within the heart of Ikea. As the truth unraveled before her, she vowed to expose the darkness that had taken root in their midst, to confront the malevolent force that threatened to consume them all. Armed with the knowledge of Mr. Thompson's dark secret, Lily embarked on a perilous journey to unravel the mysteries of Ikea's labyrinthine corridors. She delved into the forbidden realms of the Megastore, uncovering hidden truths and confronting unspeakable horrors along the way. With every step, the malevolent force fought back, its grip on the employees of Ikea growing stronger with each passing moment. But Lily was determined to free herself and her co-workers from the clutches of the darkness that had taken root within the store. As she ventured deeper into the labyrinth, she discovered the true extent of the malevolent force's influence its origins rooted in a forbidden pact that threatened to plunge them all into eternal darkness. With courage and determination, Lily faced the ultimate challenge, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the malevolent force that had haunted her nightmares. The final confrontation unfolded within the heart of Ikea, a battle between light and shadow that would determine the fate of those trapped within its walls. In the end, Lily emerged victorious, breaking the malevolent force's hold on Ikea and freeing her co-workers from its insidious influence. As the darkness receded, the employees of Ikea began to rebuild their lives, their shared ordeal forging bonds of camaraderie that transcended the horrors they had faced. But even as the sun set on the labyrinth of Ikea, casting long shadows across the polished floors, Lily couldn't shake off the lingering sense of foreboding. She knew that the malevolent force was not truly vanquished, that its whispers still echoed in the silence of the megastore. As she walked away from the now silent aisles, Lily couldn't help but glance over her shoulder, half expecting to see the shadows stirring once more. The battle may have been won, but the war against the otherworldly darkness that lurked within Ikea was far from over. And as she stepped out into the fading light of day, Lily couldn't shake off the feeling that the true climax of their story was yet to come. Story 3 Once in the heart of a small town nestled between rolling hills, there lived a man named Oliver. Oliver was a simple man leading a mundane life, working as an accountant in a small office. His apartment, though neat, bore the signs of wear and tear. The furniture in particular had seen better days. One day, after contemplating the state of his worn-out sofa and creaky bed, Oliver decided it was time for a change. He yearned for a fresh start, a new beginning that would be marked by modern and stylish furniture. After days of contemplation, he settled on Ikea as the perfect destination to revamp his living space. Now, Oliver wasn't one to engage in impulsive decisions, so he planned his trip meticulously. He researched the best time to visit Ikea, avoiding the crowds and chaos of the daytime. After much consideration, he concluded that a late night visit would be ideal. 
With his plan in place, Oliver found himself standing in the parking lot of Ikea one chilly evening. The store loomed before him like a monolith, its sprawling size accentuated by the lack of bustling shoppers. The silence of the night enveloped him, intensifying the anticipation that tingled in the air. As he entered the quiet labyrinth of the showroom, Oliver marveled at the vast array of furniture. Each display seemed to beckon him with promises of comfort and sophistication. He roamed through the staged living rooms and bedrooms, imagining the transformation his own humble abode would undergo. Lost in thought, Oliver rounded a corner and found himself in the kitchen section. Rows of sleek countertops and minimalist cabinets stretched before him. It was there amidst the displays of kitchenware that he first noticed a figure in the shadows. A tall, lanky man stood near a stainless steel refrigerator, his eyes hidden beneath the shadow of a baseball cap. Oliver dismissed him initially, assuming he was another late-night furniture seeker like himself. However, as he continued his perusal of the kitchen displays, he felt the weight of a gaze upon him. Turning around, Oliver met the intense gaze of the stranger. The man's eyes were piercing, a stark contrast to the otherwise nondescript appearance. A shiver ran down Oliver's spine as he quickly averted his gaze, convincing himself that it was just a coincidence. Attempting to shake off the uneasy feeling, Oliver moved deeper into the showroom, now focusing on the bedroom section. However, no matter where he wandered, he couldn't shake the sense of being watched. Glancing over his shoulder, he saw the man trailing him, maintaining a deliberate distance. Growing increasingly uneasy, Oliver decided to confront the stranger. Hey, are you looking for something specific? He asked, feigning casual interest. The man's response was a curt nod and he muttered something about needing a new bed. Despite the vague answer, Oliver couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. The air in the showroom grew heavier, and the once inviting displays now seemed like elaborate traps. Unsure of how to proceed, Oliver quickened his pace, hoping to lose the mysterious man in the maze of furniture. Yet at every turn, there he was, the figure in the cap, unrelenting in his pursuit. Panic began to set in as Oliver realized he might not be dealing with a fellow shopper. The late-night quietude of Ikea now felt oppressive, and Oliver's footsteps echoed through the vast space. He considered seeking help from the employees but dismissed the idea, fearing that the stranger might escalate the situation if confronted. Instead, he decided to make a beeline for the exit. With each step, the man closed the gap, his silent pursuit mirroring Oliver's every move. As he approached the exit, relief washed over him. The automatic doors beckoned like a portal to safety. However, just as he reached for the handle, a voice cut through the silence. Leaving so soon? Oliver froze. The man's voice, low and menacing, sent chills down his spine. Slowly turning, he found himself face to face with the stranger, who had shed any pretense of normalcy. His eyes, now devoid of any disguise, gleamed with an unsettling intensity. It was then that Oliver noticed the subtle details he had overlooked. The worn prison tattoos peeking out from beneath the sleeves. The cold, calculating gaze that betrayed a history of violence. Panic gripped him as he realized he was not dealing with an ordinary escapee, but a dangerous convict on the run. The stranger stepped closer, revealing a wicked grin. You didn't think you could escape, did you? In that moment, Oliver's survival instincts kicked in. He sprinted towards the exit, desperation lending wings to his feet. The automatic doors slid open and he burst into the night, gasping for breath. The cold air stung his lungs as he sprinted through the empty parking lot, the distant wail of sirens piercing the quiet night. As he neared his car, Oliver fumbled with his keys, the fear driving him to act on pure instinct. He fumbled into the driver's seat, locked the doors, and sped away from the darkened behemoth that was Ikea. The encounter left him shaken to the core, the realization of narrowly escaping a potentially deadly situation sinking in. Days turned into weeks, and Oliver tried to put the harrowing experience behind him. He enhanced his security measures at home, constantly glancing over his shoulder, haunted by the fear that the convict might still be lurking in the shadows. One fateful night, as Oliver settled into his new sofa, attempting to find solace in the familiar comfort of his revamped living room, a news report blared from the television. The story sent shivers down his spine, the dangerous convict who had escaped from prison. 
the very man who had haunted his Ikea visit, was captured. The report detailed the man's crime-ridden past, a history of violence and brutality that made Oliver's blood run cold. The police had finally apprehended him, bringing an end to the reign of terror that had gripped the town. Relieved and exhausted, Oliver sank into his sofa, attempting to put the nightmare behind him. Little did he know that the horror was far from over. As he closed his eyes, a sudden creak echoed through the apartment, a sound that wasn't there before. Dread filled the room as Oliver realized that the true horror had only just begun. For days after the Ikea encounter, Oliver's life seemed to return to normalcy. The convict, whose face had haunted his nightmares, was behind bars, and the town breathed a collective sigh of relief. Yet despite the facade of normality, Oliver couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. The creaks in the night, the subtle sounds that seemed to echo through his apartment, became a constant reminder of the terror he had narrowly escaped. Weeks passed and Oliver's initial paranoia began to wane. He immersed himself in his work, attempting to bury the trauma beneath the monotony of daily life. It was during one particularly late night, as he sorted through spreadsheets and financial reports, that he heard it. A faint whisper carried through the air, a sinister murmur that seemed to echo from the darkest corners of his apartment. Frozen in his chair, Oliver strained to catch the elusive words. The voice was indistinct, like a distant echo, but the underlying menace sent shivers down his spine. Fear clawed at his chest as he scanned the room, half expecting to see the shadow of the convict lurking in the shadows. Days turned into nights and the whispers persisted. Oliver's once peaceful abode now felt like a battleground of unseen forces. He confided in friends, but their dismissive reassurances only fueled his growing paranoia. Sleep eluded him, and the lines between reality and imagination blurred into a disconcerting haze. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across Oliver's apartment, the whispers intensified. The air seemed charged with an otherworldly energy, and he found himself drawn towards the source of the haunting murmur. The whispers led him through the dimly lit rooms, guiding him like a force with an agenda of its own. In the heart of his living room, Oliver came to a sudden stop. The whispers coalesced into a chilling chant, and he felt the temperature in the room drop. The furniture, once arranged with meticulous precision, now bore the signs of a malevolent rearrangement. The sofa, the very one he had sought solace in after the Ikea incident, stood at an odd angle, facing an empty corner of the room. A guttural growl reverberated through the air and Oliver felt a cold breath against the nape of his neck. Paralyzed by fear, he turned slowly, dreading what he might find. The convict, whose escape had dominated his nightmares, stood before him, a spectral apparition with hollow eyes and an ethereal aura. You thought you could escape me, the ghostly figure hissed, its voice an eerie echo of the man Oliver had encountered in the Ikea showroom. With each step, the apparition closed the distance, its form shifting between the tangible and the intangible. Oliver stumbled backward, desperate to escape the clutches of the vengeful spirit. The room seemed to warp and twist, reality itself bending to the will of the supernatural force that now held him captive. As the ghostly convict lunged forward, a blinding light engulfed Oliver. For a fleeting moment, he felt weightless, suspended in a void of nothingness. Then, as abruptly as it began, the spectral encounter ceased. Oliver found himself back in his living room, the furniture restored to its original state, the whispers silenced. Confusion and relief washed over him, but the horror persisted in his eyes. The encounter had transcended the boundaries of the physical world, leaving him teetering on the edge of sanity. The line between reality and the supernatural had blurred, and Oliver knew that he could never truly escape the specter of that fateful Ikea night. In the days that followed, the whispers lingered, a constant reminder of the force that had invaded his life. Oliver became a shell of his former self, haunted by a terror that transcended the physical realm. The once vibrant and meticulous man withered away, consumed by the unseen horror that had taken root in his very soul. And so in the heart of that small town nestled between rolling hills, Oliver's apartment became a cautionary tale a place shrouded in a supernatural darkness that defied explanation. 
The whispers echoed through the walls, a chilling reminder that some horrors once unleashed could never be confined to the realm of fiction. It was a crisp autumn night when Jenna and I set out on a seemingly ordinary night drive to visit her family in a small town nestled amidst rolling hills. The stars glittered above, and a serene calm enveloped the countryside. Little did we know that our journey into the night would unfold into a nightmarish ordeal. The familiar hum of the engine and the rhythmic swish of the tires against the pavement accompanied us as we ventured into the unknown. The road stretched before us, flanked by fields that seemed to stretch into eternity. The occasional signpost and distant farmhouse provided the only markers in the vast expanse. As we delved deeper into the night, conversation flowed effortlessly. Jenna shared anecdotes about her family and laughter resonated within the confines of the car. The headlights cut through the darkness, revealing the narrow road ahead. It was a typical setting for a family visit. Uneventful, simple, and comforting. However, as we approached a desolate stretch of road, the atmosphere shifted imperceptibly. The once illuminated road became engulfed in darkness, and an uneasy tension settled between us. Jenna's cheerful demeanor waned, replaced by a subtle apprehension that mirrored my own. The landscape transformed into a sea of shadows, and the faint glow of the dashboard seemed inadequate in dispelling the encroaching darkness. The surroundings, once familiar, now took on an eerie unfamiliarity. The rhythmic beat of raindrops against the car roof added to the sense of isolation that wrapped around us. A flicker of unease stirred within me as we navigated the labyrinth of winding roads. The headlights cast long shadows that danced ominously on the trees lining the path. The silence outside pressed against the windows, broken only by the monotonous whir of the tires. Jenna, sensing my growing unease, attempted to reassure me. It's just a bit isolated here, that's all. We'll reach the town soon, she said, her voice carrying a tinge of uncertainty. I nodded, trying to dismiss the growing knot in my stomach. As the darkness thickened, the road seemed to stretch endlessly into the night. The only guiding lights were the beams from our headlights, revealing glimpses of the road ahead before it disappeared into obscurity. Signs indicating the distance to the town became infrequent, adding to the disconcerting sense of being lost in the vastness of the night. Suddenly a thick fog rolled in, reducing visibility to a mere few feet. The headlights struggled against the dense mist, creating an otherworldly glow that added to the surreal atmosphere. The road ahead became an uncertain path, each turn in anticipation of the unknown. Anxiety crept into our conversation and words became sparse. Jenna, now peering intently through the windshield, admitted, I don't remember this part of the drive being so challenging. The subtle admission hung in the air, punctuating the growing unease that permeated the car. Navigating through the thick fog, the sense of isolation intensified. The car felt like a solitary vessel adrift in an ocean of uncertainty. Tension escalated as the road, obscured by the mist, became increasingly difficult to discern. A chilling awareness settled in. We were lost. Attempting to maintain composure, I suggested checking the GPS on Jenna's phone. The electronic voice guided us through a series of turns, each one plunging us deeper into the enigmatic night. The fog, unyielding in its grip, seemed to distort the very fabric of reality. Jenna's gaze, fixed on the screen, mirrored the confusion that echoed within me. The GPS, ostensibly a source of reassurance, transformed into an unreliable guide. The road it led us onto dwindled into an uneven path, bordered by foreboding woods on either side. In the oppressive silence, the only audible sounds were the sporadic raindrops tapping against the car's exterior. The uncertainty of our surroundings compounded, and the car moved through the mist-shrouded landscape like a vessel caught in a phantom tide. A faint glimmer of hope emerged when we spotted distant lights, a sign of civilization. As we approached, relief washed over us. It was a small gas station, its flickering lights cutting through the fog like beacons of salvation. Pulling into the gas station, we were greeted by an eerie stillness. The air hung heavy with an unspoken tension, and the dimly lit pumps cast long shadows on the damp ground. Unease clung to the surroundings as we surveyed the desolate landscape. Jenna, determined to seek directions, approached the gas station attendant. The interaction was brief, 
the attendant pointing down a dimly lit road with a cryptic warning about reaching our destination. A shiver ran down my spine, the words resonating with an unspoken dread. Back on the road, the fog persisted and the dimly lit gas station faded into the distance. The road became an interminable stretch and a sense of disorientation settled in. The eerie stillness of the gas station lingered, a haunting echo in the night. As we pressed on, the fog lifted, revealing a desolate landscape. The road, flanked by dense woods, seemed to stretch into an infinite expanse. The car's headlights, now the sole source of illumination, cast long, distorted shadows that seemed to writhe in the darkness. An unspoken tension filled the car as we continued our journey through the unknown. The occasional signpost offered little reassurance, the distance to the town seemingly expanding with each passing mile. Time itself became elusive and the night, once a familiar companion, became an adversary in the vast expanse. It was then, as the road curved through a dense thicket of trees, that our nightmare unfolded. A figure emerged from the shadows, a silhouette that materialized in the dim glow of the headlights. The sudden appearance sent a jolt of fear through us, the car skidding to a halt. A man disheveled and wild-eyed stood in the middle of the road. His presence was an enigma, and the air crackled with an unspoken threat. Panic gripped us as we realized the isolation of the night had brought us face to face with an unknown peril. With trepidation, Jenna cautiously rolled down her window. The man's words, a disjointed string of incoherence, heightened our fear. He spoke of a town lost in time, a place untouched by the realities of the world. His eyes, haunted and vacant, seemed to hold a truth that transcended the tangible. In that moment, horror unfolded as more figures emerged from the shadows. They encircled the car, their disheveled appearance and hollow gazes creating a tableau of nightmarish surrealism. A primal instinct took over and Jenna frantically attempted to navigate the car through the encroaching figures. The road, once a path to reunion, became a gauntlet of terror. The figures, seemingly untouched by the passage of time, pursued us with an unsettling determination. The car's engine roared as we accelerated through the night, the haunting images of the figures fading into the rearview mirror. It was only when we reached the safety of the town, the dim glow of streetlights providing a refuge from the darkness, that a sense of horror settled in. The figures lost in the night became a haunting memory, a surreal encounter with an unknown terror that lurked in the shadows. Our night drive, intended to be a simple journey to family, had become a descent into an inexplicable nightmare. The isolation of the night, the fog-shrouded roads, and the encounter with those enigmatic figures left an indelible mark on our psyche. The horrors that unfolded in the darkness were a chilling reminder that sometimes the unknown can manifest as an unexpected terror, hidden in the quiet corners of the night. Story 2 The night was draped in an inky blackness as I embarked on the journey to my friend's house. The road, an endless ribbon stretching into the unknown, was punctuated only by the intermittent glow of my car's headlights. The familiar hum of the engine was my sole companion, cutting through the silence of the night. As I traversed through dimly lit highways and quiet country roads, the monotony of the drive began to take hold. The dashboard clock ticked away the minutes, and the rhythmic drumming of rain on the roof created a lulling cadence. My eyes, heavy with the weariness of the day, scanned the surroundings for any signs of my destination. The fuel gauge, an unnoticed sentinel on my dashboard, suddenly snapped into focus. Dread settled in as I realized my oversight. The gas tank, once sufficient for the journey, now hovered dangerously close to empty. Panic gripped me as I scanned the desolate surroundings, searching desperately for any glimmer of a gas station. Miles stretched before me, and the road, once a pathway to familiarity, now seemed an endless stretch of uncertainty. The glow of my headlights revealed nothing but an expanse of trees and darkness. Anxiety pulsed through my veins as the car sputtered, a final warning before succumbing to the inevitable. I had run out of gas. With a defeated sigh, I coasted to the side of the road. The rain, now a relentless downpour, added to the dismal atmosphere. The isolation was palpable as I sat alone in the cocoon of my car, the rhythmic patter of raindrops providing a disconcerting soundtrack to my predicament. Fumbling for my phone, I hoped for a glimmer of signal to call for help. As luck would have it, there was none. The realization dawned on me, stranded in the middle of nowhere, in the dead of night, with no immediate solution in sight. 
Just as resignation settled in, the distant sound of footsteps approached. A flicker of hope ignited within me as I peered into the rain-streaked darkness. The silhouette of a man emerged, his form obscured by the curtain of rain. Relief washed over me as I envisioned assistance arriving just in the nick of time. The man, clad in a worn-out jacket and a faded baseball cap, approached with an easy smile. His friendly demeanor seemed genuine and I welcomed the prospect of help. He introduced himself as Mike, claiming to live nearby. His offer to assist with a gas canister seemed heaven sent. As we walked through the rain towards his vehicle, a nagging sense of unease crept in. The isolation of the night, the deserted road, and the sudden appearance of a stranger all created a disconcerting ambience. I brushed it off as paranoia, attributing it to the vulnerability of the situation. Mike's car, a nondescript sedan, was parked a short distance away. The rhythmic beat of rain on its roof created a muffled backdrop to our conversation. He explained that he had a spare gas canister at his place just a little further down the road. Grateful for the help, I hesitated but eventually agreed to accompany him. As we drove through the rain-soaked night, a subtle shift in the atmosphere unsettled me. The dimly lit road seemed to extend endlessly, the glow of civilization becoming a distant memory. Mike, however, reassured me with casual conversation, diverting my attention from the growing unease. The car came to a halt in front of a dilapidated house, its windows long devoid of any sign of life. An eerie stillness hung in the air as I stepped out, raindrops cascading from the brim of my cap. Mike gestured towards the house, assuring me that the gas canister was inside. A chill ran down my spine as we entered the dimly lit dwelling. The creaking floorboards and the musty scent of neglect created an unsettling ambience. My instincts screamed at me to leave, but politeness and the hope for a solution kept me tethered to the moment. As we navigated through the gloom, the sense of dread intensified. The rooms adorned with faded wallpaper and remnants of forgotten lives seemed frozen in time. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was an intruder in a space that held secrets long buried in its decaying walls. The door to what Mike claimed was the storage room creaked open, revealing a space cluttered with forgotten relics. In the dim light, I noticed the absence of a gas canister. Confusion painted my face as Mike's demeanor shifted. His friendly smile morphed into a predatory grin and the air thickened with an unspoken malevolence. Before I could react, he lunged at me. Panic surged through my veins as I fought against his overpowering strength. The isolation, the deserted house, and the torrential rain outside painted a grim reality. There was no one to hear my desperate pleas for help. As the struggle ensued, I glimpsed a glint of metal, a rusty shovel leaning against the wall. Adrenaline coursing through my veins, I seized the opportunity. With all my strength, I wrestled free and swung the shovel, connecting with a sickening thud. Mike crumpled to the floor, a mixture of rainwater and blood staining the faded carpet. Fear and desperation fueled my escape. I sprinted through the rain-soaked night, the desolate road now a treacherous pathway to freedom. The cold air stung my lungs as I raced towards the distant glow of approaching headlights. The night, once a shroud of isolation, became my ally in the frantic pursuit of escape. A passing driver, alerted by the sight of a disheveled figure on the roadside, offered assistance. Incoherent and breathless, I recounted the harrowing encounter with Mike. The driver, empathetic and alarmed, contacted the authorities. Relief washed over me as the distant wail of sirens heralded the arrival of help. The horror of that night lingered, an indelible imprint on my memory. The rain, once a mere backdrop to the ordeal, now seemed to echo the intensity of the encounter. The isolation, vulnerability, and the friendly stranger with dark intent became a cautionary tale etched in the annals of that desolate night. In the aftermath, as I reflected on the horrific encounter, the realization hit me. The road, once a simple conduit between destinations, had become a battleground of survival. The night, initially an adversary, had transformed into an unexpected ally, guiding me through the ordeal to the safety that awaited beyond the storm. Story 3 the night enveloped the city as I stepped out of the office, my job interview now a distant memory. The bustling streets had transformed into a quiet landscape, bathed in the dim glow of streetlights. With the weight of anticipation and a faint hint of success, I set out on the familiar route home, my car a solitary companion in the stillness of the night. 
As I navigated through the labyrinth of city streets, the glow of urban life gradually gave way to the outskirts. The road stretched before me, flanked by darkened fields and occasional clusters of trees. The city's hum faded into the background, replaced by the rhythmic hum of the car engine and the distant sounds of the night. The drive, initially uneventful, took an unexpected turn as I entered a poorly lit stretch of road. The streetlights became sporadic, casting elongated shadows that seemed to dance in the periphery of my vision. Unease settled in, intensified by the stark contrast between the urban glow and the isolating darkness that now surrounded me. As I continued along the dimly lit road, a chill crept through the car, a sensation that transcended the comfort of the heated interior. A sense of vulnerability took hold, heightened by the awareness of the solitary nature of the journey. The occasional passing car offered momentary relief, only to plunge me back into the eerie stillness as it faded into the distance. The radio, my usual companion during drives, became a source of dissonance. The familiar tunes now carried an unfamiliar weight, the lyrics echoing in the confines of the car. I switched it off, seeking solace in the silence. Yet the absence of sound only magnified the subtle creaks and rattles of the car, each noise a reminder of the desolate night. As the road unfurled before me, an unsettling awareness settled in. I was entering an area unfamiliar to me. The dimly lit road seemed to stretch endlessly, each turn revealing an identical expanse. The landmarks that once provided a sense of direction were replaced by an unbroken line of darkness. A flicker of uncertainty stirred within me as I contemplated whether I had taken a wrong turn. Glancing at the GPS on my phone, I found myself on an unfamiliar route the blue dot drifting through a sea of uncharted territory. Panic fluttered in the pit of my stomach as I realized the potential magnitude of my detour. Attempting to regain a sense of direction, I followed the GPS instructions. The road twisted and turned, each curve plunging me deeper into the unknown. The landscape, once characterized by open fields, now morphed into a dense thicket of trees. The occasional glimmer of moonlight struggled through the thick canopy creating an ethereal glow that heightened the sense of isolation. The GPS, seemingly oblivious to my growing unease, guided me through a series of increasingly narrow roads. The surroundings became an indistinct blur, the car a solitary vessel navigating an unfamiliar sea. The occasional rustle of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl created a haunting symphony that underscored the eeriness of the night. My phone signal wavered and the GPS lost its connection. Panic gripped me as I found myself alone in the heart of the unfamiliar terrain. The car's headlights cut through the enveloping darkness, revealing an unending expanse of trees that seemed to loom ominously on either side. A surge of fear took hold as I realized the gravity of my situation. The isolation, the absence of familiar landmarks, and the impenetrable darkness created a suffocating atmosphere. The road ahead, now a narrow path flanked by towering trees, stretched into an unsettling infinity. As I contemplated my next move, a faint glow emerged in the distance. Relief washed over me as I approached what seemed to be a small gas station, its lights flickering like beacons of salvation. The sight of civilization in the desolate night offered a momentary respite from the encroaching fear. Pulling into the gas station, I was met with an eerie stillness. The air hung heavy with an unspoken tension, and the dimly lit pumps cast long shadows on the damp ground. A sense of foreboding settled over me as I surveyed the desolate landscape. Determined to seek directions, I approached the gas station attendant. The interaction was brief, the attendant pointing down a dimly lit road with a cryptic warning about reaching my destination. A shiver ran down my spine, the words resonating with an unspoken dread. Back on the road, the glow of the gas station faded into the distance and the darkness once again claimed its dominion. The road, now a narrow ribbon bordered by impenetrable woods, seemed to twist and turn without rhyme or reason. The sense of isolation intensified, each passing moment an agonizing reminder of the unknown that lurked in the shadows. A sudden realization gripped me. The road ahead bore no resemblance to the route I had initially taken. The GPS, now a useless artifact, offered no guidance. Panic set in as I grappled with the disconcerting awareness that I was lost in the heart of the unfamiliar. Navigating through the twisting road, a series of dilapidated signs came into view. 
Faint letters barely visible in the car's headlights hinted at a town in the distance. Desperation fueled my determination to reach the supposed sanctuary. The thought of finding familiar ground a beacon of hope in the oppressive darkness. As I approached the town, a chilling realization unfolded. The dilapidated signs, once a source of hope, now revealed an ominous truth. The town, far from being a haven, appeared abandoned. The windows of decaying buildings stared vacantly into the night, and the streets, devoid of life, seemed frozen in a state of desolation. Unease settled over me as I navigated the ghostly town. The silence, broken only by the occasional creak of the car and the distant hoot of an owl, heightened the surreal atmosphere. The air itself felt heavy, laden with a disquiet that transcended the physical realm. Attempting to retrace my steps, I found myself trapped in a labyrinth of empty streets. The town, once a potential refuge, became a maze of haunting desolation. Panic swelled within me as the realization set in. The town held no solace, and the night had become an inescapable nightmare. As I turned a corner, a figure emerged from the shadows, a silhouette that materialized in the dim glow of the car's headlights. The sudden appearance sent a jolt of fear through me, the car skidding to a halt. A woman disheveled and wild-eyed stood in the middle of the road. Her presence was an enigma, and the air crackled with an unspoken threat. With trepidation, I cautiously rolled down my window. The woman's words, a disjointed string of incoherence, heightened my fear. She spoke of a town lost in time, a place untouched by the realities of the world. Her eyes, haunted and vacant, seemed to hold a truth that transcended the tangible. In that moment, horror unfolded as more figures emerged from the shadows. They encircled the car, their disheveled appearance and hollow gazes creating a tableau of nightmarish surrealism. A primal instinct took over, and I frantically attempted to navigate the car through the nightmarish gauntlet. The figures, silent and relentless, pursued with an eerie determination. The dilapidated buildings, once silent sentinels of desolation, echoed with the disconcerting sound of footsteps. Panic escalated as I felt the oppressive weight of their presence, an unseen force that seemed to transcend the bounds of reality. In a desperate bid for escape, I sped through the empty streets, the figures trailing behind like phantoms in the night. The town, now a haunting labyrinth, blurred into a disorienting maze of shadows and decay. The sense of horror intensified, each passing moment an agonizing descent into the unknown. As I reached the outskirts of the town, a chilling realization set in. The figures had not relented in their pursuit. The narrow road, once an escape route, seemed to stretch endlessly, the darkness closing in like a malevolent force. Desperation fueled my resolve as I pressed on, the car hurtling through the night with an urgency born of terror. The car's headlights illuminated a sign, a glimmer of hope that promised an end to the nightmare. The town's name, a familiar beacon, loomed in the distance. Relief washed over me as I entered the familiar territory, the nightmarish town fading into the rearview mirror. Yet the horror persisted. The figures, though absent in the rearview mirror, seemed to linger in the shadows of my consciousness. The drive, once a routine journey, had become a descent into the unknown, a journey that blurred the line between reality and nightmare. As I neared the safety of home, the weight of the night lingered. The isolation, the desolate town lost in time, and the haunting figures became indelible imprints on the canvas of my memory. The night drive, intended as a simple journey, had become a harrowing odyssey through the corridors of fear. The echoes of that night lingered, a spectral presence that transcended the confines of the car. The inexplicable horrors, hidden in the quiet corners of the night, became a chilling reminder that sometimes the journey itself becomes a descent into darkness, an unraveling of the mundane into the inexplicable. The forest stretched out before us, a dense thicket of towering trees and tangled underbrush that seemed to swallow the sunlight whole. My friends and I had ventured into the wilderness for a weekend of camping, eager to escape the hustle and bustle of city life and reconnect with nature. Little did we know, our journey would lead us into the clutches of a terror that lurked in the shadows of the woods. As we trudged along the winding trail, the air thick with the scent of pine and earth, a sense of unease settled over our group. The trees seemed to close in around us, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers grasping for our flesh. Despite our nerves, we pressed on, fueled by a sense of adventure and camaraderie. 
Nightfall descended upon the forest like a shroud, casting a blanket of darkness over the landscape. We set up camp in a small clearing, the crackling campfire providing a flickering beacon of light in the enveloping blackness. We laughed and joked as we roasted marshmallows and shared stories, the warmth of the fire warding off the chill of the night. But as the fire burned low and the sounds of the forest grew hushed, a sense of foreboding crept over us like a shadow. Strange noises echoed through the trees, the snapping of twigs and rustling of leaves sending shivers down our spines. We huddled closer together, our eyes scanning the darkness for any sign of danger. And then we saw him, a figure emerging from the depths of the forest, his silhouette illuminated by the dying embers of our campfire. He moved with an unsettling grace, his movements silent and fluid as he approached our campsite. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched him draw nearer, a cold sweat breaking out across my brow. There was something about him, something primal and menacing. He was tall and lean with wild hair and a beard that hung in unkempt tangles around his face. His eyes gleamed in the firelight, dark and feral, like those of a predator sizing up its prey. Who are you? I called out, my voice trembling with fear as he drew closer. He said nothing in response, his gaze fixed on me with an intensity that made my blood run cold. And then, with a sudden burst of movement, he lunged forward, his hands outstretched as if to grab me. We scrambled to our feet, our screams echoing through the forest as we fled into the darkness. Branches clawed at our skin and roots tripped us up as we stumbled through the undergrowth, our hearts pounding in our chests. But no matter how fast we ran, the woodsman was always one step behind us, his presence looming over us like a shadow. We could hear his ragged breaths and the sound of his footsteps echoing through the night, a constant reminder of the danger that pursued us. Hours passed in a blur of terror and exhaustion as we fled deeper into the heart of the forest. The trees seemed to stretch on endlessly, their branches twisting and intertwining like the fingers of some malevolent force that sought to ensnare us in its grasp. And then, just when we thought we could run no further, we stumbled upon it. A clearing bathed in moonlight, with a small cabin nestled at its center. It seemed like a sanctuary amidst the chaos of the woods, a beacon of hope in the darkness that surrounded us. With a sense of desperation, we raced towards the cabin, our breaths coming in ragged gasps as we reached for the door. But as we pushed it open and stumbled inside, our relief turned to horror. The interior of the cabin was a scene of carnage, with blood splattered across the walls and the floor littered with the bodies of its former occupants. It was a gruesome tableau of death and despair, a stark reminder of the darkness that lurked within the heart of the forest. And there, standing amidst the carnage, was the woodsman himself, his eyes gleaming with a savage hunger as he advanced towards us. With nowhere left to run and no hope of escape, we braced ourselves for the inevitable knowing that our fate was sealed. In the end, all that remained was the sound of our screams echoing through the forest, lost amidst the trees and the darkness that enveloped us. And as the last echoes faded into silence, I knew that we had become just another tale of horror lost in the depths of the woods. As the woodsman closed in on us, his eyes burning with a primal intensity, we were paralyzed by fear, unable to muster the strength to defend ourselves. His presence seemed to fill the room, suffocating us with a sense of dread that was palpable in the air. With a chilling grin, the woodsman raised his hand, revealing a rusted axe that glinted in the dim light of the cabin. The sight of the weapon sent a wave of terror coursing through our veins, our minds reeling with the realization that our lives hung in the balance. Please, I pleaded, my voice trembling with desperation. Whatever you want, we'll give it to you. Just let us go. But the woodsman's only response was a guttural growl, his features contorted into a mask of madness as he advanced towards us with murderous intent. With nowhere left to turn, we huddled together in the corner of the cabin, our hearts pounding in our chests as we awaited our fate. And then, just as the woodsman raised his axe to strike, a deafening roar echoed through the forest, shaking the very foundations of the cabin. The woodsman hesitated, his gaze darting towards the door as a look of fear crossed his face. Without warning, the door burst open and a massive grizzly bear charged into the cabin, its fur matted with blood and its eyes blazing with fury. In a frenzy of claws and teeth, it launched itself at the woodsman, 
its savage roars drowning out his screams of terror. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as the two beasts clashed in a violent struggle for dominance. The air was thick with the scent of blood and sweat, and the sound of their battle filled the cabin with a cacophony of fury. And then, with a final swipe of its claws, the grizzly bear delivered the killing blow, its massive paw slamming into the woodsman's chest with bone-crushing force. The woodsman's scream was cut short as he was sent hurtling across the room, his body crashing to the floor in a heap of broken limbs. We watched in stunned silence as the grizzly bear stood victorious over its fallen foe, its chest heaving with exertion as it surveyed the scene before it. And then, as quickly as it had appeared, it turned and lumbered out of the cabin, disappearing into the darkness of the forest once more. We were left alone in the cabin, the air heavy with the weight of what had just transpired. The woodsman lay motionless on the floor, his lifeless eyes staring up at the ceiling with a vacant stare. With trembling hands, we gathered our belongings and fled from the cabin, our minds reeling from the horror of what we had witnessed. The forest seemed to stretch on endlessly around us, its depths filled with untold dangers and dark secrets that lurked just beyond our sight. As we stumbled through the underbrush, our hearts heavy with grief and fear, we knew that we would never forget the terror of that night in the woods. And as the first light of dawn broke through the trees, Illuminating the path before us, we vowed never to return to the wilderness again, lest we fall victim to its horrors once more. Story 2. The storm had caught us by surprise, its dark clouds rolling in with an ominous rumble of thunder as we hiked through the dense forest. Rain pounded against the leaves, turning the ground beneath our feet into a slick, muddy mess. Lightning streaked across the sky, illuminating the path ahead in brief flashes of brilliance. With each passing moment, the storm grew fiercer, driving us deeper into the heart of the wilderness in search of shelter. As the rain soaked through our clothes and the wind whipped through the trees, we stumbled upon it. An empty cottage nestled amidst the trees, its windows dark and its door hanging slightly ajar. It seemed like a sanctuary amidst the chaos of the storm, a beacon of hope in the darkness that surrounded us. With a sense of relief, we hurried towards the cottage our footsteps splashing through puddles as we reached for the door. With a creak of rusty hinges, it swung open, revealing the dimly lit interior of the cabin. We stepped inside, grateful for the shelter it provided from the fury of the storm. The air inside the cottage was musty and stale, with dust motes dancing in the faint beam of light that filtered through the windows. The furniture was old and worn, covered in a layer of dust and cobwebs that spoke of years of neglect. Despite the dilapidated state of the cottage, we were grateful for the respite it offered from the storm. We huddled together around a crackling fire, our clothes steaming as they dried in the warmth of the flames. Outside, the rain continued to fall in sheets, the sound of its patter against the windows a soothing backdrop to our conversation. But as the hours passed and the storm showed no signs of abating, a sense of unease settled over our group. The cottage seemed to take on a sinister air in the darkness, its walls closing in around us like the jaws of some unseen predator. With nervous laughter and furtive glances, we joked about the possibility of ghosts haunting the abandoned cabin, our words tinged with an undercurrent of fear. But deep down, we knew that the true danger lay not in the supernatural, but in the very real threats that lurked in the heart of the forest. As night fell and the storm raged on outside, we settled in for the night, hoping that the worst of the weather would soon pass. But as we drifted off to sleep, a nagging sense of unease gnawed at the edges of our consciousness, like a whisper in the darkness warning us of the horrors that lay in wait. It was in the dead of night that I awoke to the sound of footsteps echoing through the cottage. At first, I thought it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, the result of a restless mind and an overactive imagination. But as the footsteps grew closer, I knew that something was terribly wrong. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I reached for the flashlight beside my bed, my fingers trembling with fear as I clicked it on. The beam of light cut through the darkness, illuminating the room in a harsh glare as I scanned the shadows for any sign of movement. And then I saw him, a figure standing in the doorway, his features obscured by the darkness as he loomed over us like a specter of death. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched him draw nearer, his footsteps slow and deliberate as he moved towards our beds. Who are you? 
I called out, my voice barely above a whisper as fear gripped me like a vice. But the figure said nothing in response, his gaze fixed on me with an intensity that made my blood run cold. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that this was no ordinary visitor, but something far more sinister. With a sudden burst of movement, the figure lunged forward, his hands outstretched as if to grab me. I screamed, the sound echoing through the cottage like a banshee's wail as I scrambled to escape his grasp. But it was too late. With a strength that belied his emaciated frame, the figure seized me by the throat, his fingers closing around my windpipe like a vice. I gasped for breath, the world spinning in a dizzying blur as darkness closed in around me. As I struggled against the iron grip of the sinister figure, my mind raced with questions and fears. Who was this man? And what did he want with us? The dim light of the flashlight flickered, casting long shadows that danced across the walls of the cottage, adding to the surreal horror of the moment. My friends stirred from their slumber, their eyes wide with terror as they realized the danger we were in. Desperate shouts and cries filled the air as we fought against the intruder, our combined efforts proving futile against his overwhelming strength. With a cruel laugh, the figure tightened his grip, his fingers digging into my flesh like claws as he dragged me towards the door. Panic surged through me, my heart pounding in my chest as I struggled to break free from his grasp. But no matter how hard I fought, the figure's hold on me remained unyielding, his eyes gleaming with a malevolent light as he dragged me out into the storm. Rain lashed against my skin, soaking me to the bone as I stumbled blindly through the darkness, my vision blurred by tears of fear and desperation. Through the haze of rain and pain, I caught glimpses of my friends, their faces twisted in terror as they watched helplessly from the safety of the cottage. With each passing moment, the gap between us grew wider until they were nothing more than distant silhouettes lost in the darkness. And then, just when I thought all hope was lost, a sudden flash of lightning illuminated the figure's face, revealing his features in stark relief. My blood ran cold as I recognized him, a deranged hermit who was rumored to inhabit the depths of the forest, preying on unsuspecting travelers who dared to venture too close to his domain. With a surge of adrenaline, I renewed my efforts to break free, my screams lost amidst the roar of the storm as I fought tooth and nail against my captor. But the hermit was relentless, his grip unyielding as he dragged me further into the darkness towards whatever twisted fate awaited me in the heart of the forest. As we stumbled through the underbrush, my mind raced with thoughts of escape. I knew that if I didn't find a way to break free soon, I would be lost to the depths of the forest forever. Another victim claimed by the darkness that lurked within its depths. But just as I was about to resign myself to my fate, a glimmer of hope appeared on the horizon the distant sound of voices calling out through the storm. With a surge of determination, I redoubled my efforts to break free, the thought of rescue driving me forward with renewed vigor. With a final burst of strength, I wrenched myself free from the hermit's grasp, stumbling towards the voices that echoed through the darkness. Rain poured down upon me, soaking me to the bone as I fought my way through the underbrush, every step bringing me closer to freedom. And then, just when I thought I couldn't go on any longer, I stumbled upon them. A group of hikers who had been caught in the storm, their faces etched with concern as they helped me to my feet. With tears streaming down my face, I recounted the horrors that had befallen us in the cottage, my words tumbling out in a rush as I pleaded for their help. The hikers listened intently to my tale, their expressions growing grim as they realized the danger that lurked in the forest. With a sense of urgency, they led me back to the safety of their camp where we waited out the remainder of the storm together, huddled around a crackling fire as we shared our stories and fears. In the days that followed, a search party was organized to comb the forest for any sign of my missing friends. But despite their best efforts, no trace of them was ever found, leaving their fate shrouded in mystery and darkness. As for me, I returned home with a newfound appreciation for the fragility of life and the dangers that lurked in the world beyond our doorstep. The memory of that fateful night in the cottage would haunt me for the rest of my days, a constant reminder of the horrors that lay hidden within the shadows of the forest. Story 3 The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a warm golden glow over the tranquil surface of the lake as my friends and I arrived at our campsite. We had been planning this trip for months, 
eager to escape the hustle and bustle of city life and immerse ourselves in the beauty of nature. Little did we know, our idyllic getaway would soon descend into a nightmare of terror and uncertainty. As we pitched our tents and gathered firewood, a sense of excitement filled the air, our laughter mingling with the sounds of birdsong and rustling leaves. The lake stretched out before us, its waters sparkling in the fading light as we dreamed of the adventures that lay ahead. But as darkness fell and the stars emerged in the night sky, a strange unease settled over our group. The air grew heavy with a sense of foreboding, and the sounds of the forest took on an eerie quality that sent shivers down our spines. At first, we dismissed our fears as nothing more than the product of overactive imaginations, attributing the strange noises and unsettling sensations to the unfamiliarity of our surroundings. But as the night wore on, the strange occurrences became harder to ignore. It started with a rustling in the bushes, followed by the sound of footsteps echoing through the darkness. We exchanged nervous glances, our hearts pounding in our chests as we strained to see through the inky blackness of the night. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the noise stopped, leaving us alone in the silence of the forest once more. But the sense of unease lingered, a dark shadow that hung over our campsite like a specter of doom. As we sat around the campfire, our conversation turned to the legends and lore that surrounded the lake. Stories of lost souls and vengeful spirits whispered through the ages, their origins lost to time, but their presence felt keenly in the depths of the forest. Despite our attempts to brush off the tales as nothing more than superstition, a sense of unease gnawed at the edges of our consciousness. The lake seemed to pulse with a dark energy, its waters reflecting the twisted shapes of the surrounding trees like a portal to another world. As the night wore on, sleep eluded us, our minds plagued by strange dreams and restless thoughts. We tossed and turned in our sleeping bags, the rustling of the wind and the lapping of the waves against the shore serving as a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the safety of our campsite. And then, just as the first light of dawn began to creep over the horizon, we heard it. A blood-curdling scream that pierced the silence of the morning like a knife. We scrambled to our feet, our hearts pounding in our chests as we searched frantically for the source of the sound. But it was too late. By the time we reached the edge of the lake, all that remained was a trail of blood leading into the water, disappearing beneath the surface without a trace. Panic surged through us, our minds reeling with horror as we realized that one of our own had fallen victim to whatever dark force lurked within the depths of the lake. With trembling hands, we called for help, our voices filled with desperation as we recounted the events of the night to the authorities. But deep down, we knew that nothing could undo the horrors that had unfolded in the darkness, leaving us forever haunted by the memory of that fateful night by the lake. The days that followed the harrowing incident by the lake were filled with a heavy silence that hung over our campsite like a shroud. Gone were the carefree laughter and easy camaraderie that had once defined our group, replaced instead by a sense of unease and apprehension that seemed to permeate every corner of our makeshift home in the wilderness. Despite our best efforts to carry on with our planned activities and distract ourselves from the trauma of what had transpired, the memory of our friend's disappearance weighed heavily on our minds. We avoided the lake whenever possible, its once inviting waters now seeming to hold a dark and sinister secret that we dared not confront. As the days turned into weeks, strange occurrences continued to plague our campsite, each one more unsettling than the last. Objects went missing in the night, only to reappear in the most unlikely of places. Strange symbols appeared etched into the bark of trees, their meaning unknown but their presence sending shivers down our spines. But perhaps the most unnerving of all were the whispers that echoed through the forest in the dead of night, their soft murmurs carrying on the wind like the voices of the lost. At first we dismissed them as nothing more than the rustling of leaves or the creaking of branches in the breeze. But as the whispers grew louder and more insistent, we could no longer deny their existence. With each passing night, the whispers seemed to draw closer, their words becoming clearer and more distinct with each passing moment. They spoke of ancient curses and forgotten rituals, of restless spirits and vengeful ghosts that roamed the shores of the lake in search of prey. Despite our fear, we were drawn to the whispers like moths to a flame unable to resist their haunting melody that seemed to pull us deeper into the darkness. 
We wandered the forest in search of their source, our hearts pounding in our chests as we followed their siren song into the unknown. And then, just when we thought we had reached the end of our journey, we stumbled upon it. A hidden clearing nestled deep within the heart of the forest, its edges shrouded in darkness as if cloaked in some ancient magic. At its center stood a gnarled oak tree, its branches twisted and contorted like the fingers of some malevolent force that sought to ensnare us in its grasp. As we approached the tree, the whispers grew louder, their words echoing in our minds with a chilling clarity that sent shivers down our spines. We hesitated, unsure of what awaited us in the darkness, but something compelled us forward, driving us inexorably towards the heart of the clearing. And then, just as we reached the base of the tree, the whispers ceased, replaced instead by a deafening silence that hung heavy in the air. We looked around in confusion, our senses on high alert as we searched for any sign of what had caused the sudden change. But it was then that we saw it, a figure emerging from the shadows, its form obscured by the darkness as it moved towards us with slow, deliberate steps. Panic surged through us, our hearts pounding in our chests as we realized that we were not alone in the clearing. With a sense of dread, we turned to flee, our footsteps echoing through the forest as we raced towards the safety of our campsite. But no matter how fast we ran, the figure was always one step ahead of us, its presence looming over us like a specter of death. And then, just as we reached the edge of the clearing, the figure lunged forward, its hands outstretched as if to grab us. We screamed, the sound echoing through the forest as we stumbled backwards, our minds reeling with fear and confusion. But before the figure could reach us, a blinding light filled the clearing, illuminating the darkness with a brilliance that was almost blinding in its intensity. We shielded our eyes from the glare, unable to look away as the light enveloped us in its warm embrace. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the light faded, leaving us standing alone in the darkness once more. The figure was gone, vanished without a trace as if it had never been there at all. For a moment we stood in stunned silence, unsure of what had just transpired. But as we turned to leave the clearing behind, a sense of unease settled over us like a dark cloud, lingering in the air long after we had fled back to the safety of our campsite. And as we lay awake in our tents that night, the whispers returned, their soft murmurs drifting through the darkness like the echoes of a nightmare that refused to fade away. We knew then that our ordeal was far from over, and that the darkness that lurked within the heart of the forest would always be there, waiting to claim us once more. In the heart of a serene suburban neighborhood, Nestled among tall trees and well-manicured lawns, stood a quaint two-story house. Within its walls resided Sarah, a young woman of grace and poise, whose days were usually filled with the warmth of her husband's presence. Yet as twilight descended, casting long shadows across the familiar rooms, Sarah found herself alone, her husband miles away on a business trip. The evening began like any other. Sarah prepared a simple dinner for herself, the rhythmic clinking of utensils against plates echoing in the empty kitchen. As darkness settled outside, she drew the curtains tight, seeking solace in the soft glow of lamplight. With her husband's absence weighing heavily on her mind, Sarah sought refuge in mundane tasks, tidying up the living room and flipping through channels on the television. But as the night grew deeper, a sense of unease began to creep into her consciousness. Each creak of the floorboard seemed amplified in the silence, every shadow morphing into a potential threat in her imagination. She chastised herself for being paranoid, for allowing her thoughts to wander down dark alleys of fear. Yet try as she might, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Midnight approached with stealthy footsteps, the world outside enveloped in a shroud of stillness. Sarah retired to her bedroom, seeking sanctuary beneath the covers of her bed, but sleep eluded her, slipping through her fingers like grains of sand. It was then that she heard it, a faint rustling, barely audible over the hum of the night. Sarah's heart quickened its pace, her senses sharpening as she strained to locate the source of the sound. She held her breath, ears pricked for any sign of movement. And then, like a whisper on the wind, came the unmistakable sound of footsteps, soft, deliberate, and undeniably human. Panic surged through Sarah's veins, rendering her limbs heavy and unresponsive. 
She wanted to scream to call out for help, but fear had stolen her voice. The footsteps drew closer, the intruder's presence a tangible weight in the air. Sarah's mind raced, grappling with the grim reality of her situation. What did they want? Money, possessions, or something far more sinister? As if in answer to her unspoken question, the bedroom door creaked open, revealing a sliver of darkness beyond. Sarah's breath caught in her throat, her eyes widening in terror as she beheld the shadowy figure lurking in the doorway. It was a man, a stranger, his features obscured by the cloak of night. He moved with predatory grace, advancing into the room with silent intent. Sarah's heart hammered in her chest, a primal instinct urging her to flee, to escape the clutches of this unknown assailant. But fear held her rooted to the spot, her muscles betraying her desperate pleas for flight. She watched helplessly as the intruder drew nearer, his gaze fixated upon her like a predator stalking its prey. And then, with a suddenness that stole the breath from her lungs, he spoke, a voice like ice, devoid of mercy or remorse. I don't want your money, he murmured, his words sending a cold sweat down Sarah's neck. I want you. Terror seized Sarah's heart in a vice-like grip, her mind reeling at the implications of his words. She was trapped, alone and defenseless, with nothing but her wits to ward off the impending danger. Frantically, she scanned the room for a means of escape, her gaze alighting on the window overlooking the backyard. It was her only chance, her last hope of evading the clutches of her would-be assailant. Summoning every ounce of courage she possessed, Sarah launched herself from the bed, her bare feet pounding against the hardwood floor. The intruder reacted with lightning speed, lunging towards her with outstretched arms. But Sarah was faster, fueled by sheer desperation and the primal instinct to survive. She reached the window in a blur of motion, flinging it open with trembling hands. The cool night air rushed to meet her, a tantalizing promise of freedom beyond the confines of her prison. With a final glance over her shoulder, Sarah leaped into the darkness, the ground rising up to meet her with a jarring impact. Pain exploded through her body, igniting every nerve ending with searing intensity. But amidst the agony, she felt something else, a surge of triumph, of defiance against the forces that sought to consume her. She had escaped, broken free from the clutches of the intruder who had sought to claim her as his own. As she lay crumpled on the ground, her breath ragged and her body battered, Sarah knew that the nightmare was far from over. But she refused to surrender to the darkness, to allow fear to dictate her fate. For she was a survivor, a woman forged in the crucible of adversity, whose strength would carry her through even the darkest of nights. And as the first rays of dawn broke across the horizon, illuminating the world with their golden light, Sarah knew that she would emerge from this ordeal stronger than ever before. But little did she know, the intruder was not finished with her. As the days passed and Sarah tried to regain a sense of normalcy, a shadow loomed over her every move. It was as if the darkness had seeped into her soul, leaving her perpetually on edge, haunted by the memory of that fateful night. She installed security cameras, triple-checked every lock, but still she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It gnawed at her sanity, eroding her sense of safety until she could hardly distinguish between reality and paranoia. Then, one evening, as Sarah sat alone in her living room, the phone rang, a shrill, piercing sound that shattered the fragile calm she had fought so hard to maintain. With trembling hands, she answered, her voice barely above a whisper. Hello? There was a moment of silence on the other end, broken only by the sound of heavy breathing. Sarah's heart hammered in her chest, her pulse quickening with a sense of dread. And then a voice, a chilling echo from the past, filled the void, sending icy tendrils of fear snaking down Sarah's spine. It's not over, Sarah, the voice hissed, each word dripping with malice. I'll always be watching, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Terror seized Sarah's heart once more, her breath catching in her throat as the realization dawned upon her. The intruder was still out there, lurking in the shadows, biding his time until he could exact his revenge. With trembling fingers, Sarah hung up the phone, her mind racing with a million unanswered questions. Who was he? Why had he targeted her? And most importantly, how could she ever hope to escape his grasp? But deep down, she knew the truth. The nightmare was far from over. 
and Sarah's ordeal had only just begun. For in the darkness that lurked beyond the safety of her home, an unseen evil watched and waited, its hunger for her flesh insatiable. And as the final tendrils of daylight faded into the inky blackness of night, Sarah knew that she would never truly be free, not as long as the shadow of the intruder loomed over her. Story 2 In the quaint suburbs of Maplewood, where the houses stood in neat rows like soldiers awaiting orders, lived a man named Michael. A bachelor in his late twenties, Michael relished the solitude of his modest home, finding solace in the quiet hum of suburban life. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the familiar streets, Michael found himself alone, his neighbors away on vacation, and his own plans canceled at the last minute. Settling into his favorite armchair, Michael sought refuge in the pages of a gripping novel, the soft glow of lamplight casting a warm embrace around him. But as the night wore on and the story unfolded, a restlessness crept into his bones, an itch he couldn't quite scratch. It was then that he heard it, a soft knock at the door, barely audible over the distant hum of passing cars. Michael glanced at the clock, eyebrows furrowing in confusion. Who could possibly be calling at this hour? With cautious steps, he made his way to the front door, heart pounding in his chest as he peered through the peephole. On the other side stood a man, a stranger, his features obscured by the faint light of the porch. Can I help you? Michael called out, his voice tinged with apprehension. The man turned towards him, a wide smile spreading across his face. Good evening, sir, he said, his voice smooth as silk. I'm here on behalf of Sunset Windows and Doors, offering free estimates for homeowners in the area. Michael hesitated, his instincts urging him to send the man away. But something about his demeanor, his polished appearance and disarming smile gave him pause. Reluctantly, he opened the door a crack, allowing the salesman to step onto the porch. The man extended a hand, his grip firm and assured. My name's Greg, he said, his smile never wavering. Mind if I come in and tell you about our latest offers? Michael hesitated, a flicker of unease dancing in the depths of his mind. But curiosity got the better of him, and he stepped aside, allowing Greg to enter his home. As the door closed behind them, Michael led Greg into the living room, gesturing for him to take a seat on the couch. Greg settled in with practiced ease, his gaze sweeping over the room with keen interest. So, what brings you to Maplewood? Michael asked trying to fill the awkward silence that hung between them. Greg shrugged, his smile never faltering. Just passing through, he replied, his tone casual. Thought I'd take the opportunity to spread the word about our company. As Greg launched into his sales pitch, Michael found himself growing increasingly uncomfortable, his mind buzzing with unanswered questions. There was something off about Greg, something in the way he moved, the way he spoke, that set Michael's teeth on edge. But try as he might, he couldn't put his finger on it. And so he sat in silence, nodding along as Greg extolled the virtues of sunset windows and doors, his words washing over him like a distant echo. It wasn't until Greg reached into his bag and pulled out a glossy brochure that Michael's unease turned to outright dread. The cover depicted a cheerful family standing in front of a newly installed door, their smiles frozen in place like masks of happiness. Greg handed the brochure to Michael, his smile widening into a grin. Take a look, he said, his voice low and conspiratorial. I think you'll find we have exactly what you're looking for. Michael forced a smile, his fingers trembling as he flipped through the pages. But as he scanned the images of pristine doors and sparkling windows, a chill crept down his neck, a sense of wrongness that he couldn't shake. And then as he reached the final page, he saw it, a photograph of Greg his face beaming with pride as he posed next to a newly installed door. Except there was something different about him, something in the coldness of his eyes, the tightness of his smile that sent a shiver down Michael's spine. Is this you? Michael asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Greg's grin faltered for a fraction of a second, his eyes narrowing ever so slightly. Of course, he replied, his tone clipped. Why do you ask? But Michael wasn't listening. His mind was racing, piecing together fragments of information like a puzzle with no solution. 
There was something sinister about Greg, something lurking beneath the surface that threatened to consume him whole. With a suddenness that took even himself by surprise, Michael stood up, his heart pounding in his chest. I think it's time for you to leave, he said, his voice steady despite the turmoil raging inside him. Greg's smile vanished, replaced by a look of cold calculation. I'm afraid I can't do that, he said, his tone devoid of emotion. You see, I have a proposition for you, one that I think you'll find very enticing. Before Michael could react, Greg reached into his coat pocket and withdrew a small vial filled with a clear liquid. What's that? Michael asked, his voice trembling with fear. Greg's smile returned, but it was no longer warm and inviting. It was a predator's smile, full of hunger and malice. Just a little something to help you relax, he said, his tone dripping with menace. And then, with a flick of his wrist, he uncorked the vial and released its contents into the air. Michael's eyes widened in horror as the noxious fumes filled the room, choking him with their suffocating embrace. He tried to fight back, to push Greg away and escape to safety, but his limbs felt heavy and sluggish, his mind clouded by a fog of confusion and fear. And as the darkness closed in around him, Michael knew. He knew that he would never escape the clutches of the sinister salesman who had come knocking at his door. For in the end, there are some threats that cannot be banished with a mere flick of the wrist. Some dangers lurk in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And as the last vestiges of consciousness slipped away, Michael could only pray that someone, anyone, would come to his rescue before it was too late. But deep down, he knew. He knew that his fate had been sealed the moment he opened the door to the deceptive salesman with a sinister intent. Story 3 in a quiet suburban neighborhood where the streets were lined with neatly trimmed lawns and the houses stood like sentinels against the encroaching darkness, resided a teenager named Ethan. With his parents away visiting family for the weekend, Ethan found himself alone in their spacious home, the emptiness echoing around him like a haunting melody. The first night passed without incident, the house enveloped in a peaceful silence that belied the chaos lurking just beyond its walls. But as the hours stretched into the early hours of morning, a sense of unease began to gnaw at Ethan's insides, casting shadows across his restless mind. Alone in the dark living room, bathed in the soft glow of the television, Ethan tried to lose himself in the world of late-night shows and mindless chatter. But every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind rattling the windows, sent a cold feeling down his chest, reminding him of his solitary confinement. As the clock struck midnight, Ethan's eyelids grew heavy with fatigue, his body yearning for the solace of sleep. With a reluctant sigh, he dragged himself up from the comfort of the couch and made his way to his bedroom, the darkness of the hallway stretching out before him like an abyss. Closing the door behind him, Ethan slipped beneath the covers of his bed, seeking refuge in the warmth of his blankets. But despite his exhaustion, sleep eluded him, his mind plagued by restless thoughts and unsettling visions. It was then that he heard it, a faint scratching at the window, like the claws of some unseen creature seeking entry into his sanctuary. Ethan's heart quickened its pace, his breath catching in his throat as he strained to listen for any sign of movement. But the scratching ceased as suddenly as it had begun, leaving Ethan to wonder if it had been nothing more than a trick of his imagination. He tried to convince himself that he was safe, that there was nothing to fear in the stillness of the night. Yet even as he closed his eyes and willed himself to sleep, a sense of foreboding lingered in the air, a whisper of danger that refused to be ignored. Hours passed in agonizing silence, each minute stretching out into eternity as Ethan tossed and turned in his bed, unable to escape the grip of his own paranoia. And then, just as the first light of dawn began to filter through the curtains, he heard it, a sound that sent a cold chill coursing through his veins. A scream, high-pitched and agonized, echoed through the house, reverberating off the walls like a macabre symphony. Ethan's blood ran cold, his heart seizing in his chest as he struggled to comprehend the horror unfolding around him. With trembling hands, he reached for his phone, his fingers fumbling with the buttons as he dialed 911, praying for salvation in the form of a disembodied voice on the other end of the line. 911, what's your emergency? came the response a beacon of hope in the darkness that threatened to consume him. There's someone in my house, 
Ethan stammered, his voice barely above a whisper. Please, you have to help me. As he relayed his address to the operator, Ethan's mind raced with a thousand unanswered questions. Who was the intruder? What did they want? And most importantly, how had they managed to breach the sanctity of his home? But there was no time for speculation. No room for doubt as the sound of footsteps echoed through the hallway, drawing closer with each passing second. Ethan's heart pounded in his chest, his breath coming in ragged gasps as he braced himself for the inevitable confrontation. And then, like a specter emerging from the shadows, the intruder appeared. A figure cloaked in darkness, their features obscured by the veil of night. Ethan's blood ran cold at the sight of them, his mind reeling with the enormity of the threat they posed. But before he could utter a single word, the intruder spoke, a voice tinged with madness, its words a twisted chorus of delusion and despair. They said I was crazy, they muttered, their voice a haunting refrain that made Ethan go cold. But I'll show them, I'll show them all. With a suddenness that stole the breath from his lungs, the intruder lunged forward, their hands outstretched like claws seeking flesh. Ethan recoiled in terror, his instincts screaming at him to flee, to escape the clutches of this deranged assailant. But there was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide as the intruder bore down upon him with relentless fury. And as Ethan stared into the abyss of their eyes, he knew, knew that he was staring into the face of madness itself, a darkness from which there could be no escape. In the end, there was only the scream, the agonized wail of a soul consumed by madness, echoing through the empty halls of a house haunted by the ghosts of its past. And as the final echoes faded into the silence of the dawn, there was only the chilling certainty that some horrors can never be banished, only endured in the cold light of day. Story 4 in a quaint suburban neighborhood where houses stood like silent sentinels guarding their secrets, lived a teenage girl named Emily. With her parents off to their cabin for the weekend, Emily found herself alone in the spacious confines of their home. At first, the prospect of solitude seemed liberating, a chance to revel in the freedom of being untethered from the watchful eyes of her family. But as night descended, casting long shadows across the empty rooms, Emily's sense of independence gave way to an unsettling sense of vulnerability. The first night passed without incident, the house enveloped in a stillness broken only by the gentle hum of the refrigerator and the occasional rustle of leaves outside. Emily tried to occupy herself with mundane tasks, reading, watching movies, anything to distract herself from the gnawing sense of unease that had settled like a stone in the pit of her stomach. But as the hours stretched into the early hours of morning, Emily found herself unable to shake the feeling that she was being watched. It was as if the walls themselves were closing in around her, suffocating her with their silent scrutiny. With a sigh of frustration, Emily retreated to her bedroom, seeking solace in the cocoon of her blankets. But sleep proved elusive, her mind racing with a thousand irrational fears and paranoid fantasies. And then, just as she was on the verge of drifting off into a fitful slumber, she heard it. A soft thud, like the sound of a door closing somewhere in the depths of the house. Emily froze, her heart pounding in her chest as she strained to listen for any further signs of movement. For a long moment, there was nothing but the oppressive silence of the night. But then, like a whisper on the wind, came the unmistakable sound of footsteps, soft and deliberate, echoing through the empty corridors of the house. Panic surged through Emily's veins, her breath catching in her throat as she realized that she was not alone. Her hands shook as she dialed 911, hoping for rescue in the form of a disembodied voice on the other end of the line. 911, what's your emergency? Came the response, a lifeline in the darkness that threatened to consume her. There's someone in my house, Emily whispered, her voice trembling with fear. Please, you have to help me. As she relayed her address to the operator, Emily's mind raced with a thousand unanswered questions. Who was the intruder? What did they want? And most importantly, how had they managed to breach the sanctity of her home? But there was no time for speculation. No room for doubt as the sound of footsteps grew louder, drawing closer with each passing second. Emily's heart pounded in her chest, her breath coming in ragged gasps as she braced herself for the inevitable confrontation. 
And then, like a specter emerging from the shadows, the intruder appeared. A figure cloaked in darkness, their features obscured by the veil of night. Emily's blood ran cold at the sight of them, her mind reeling with the enormity of the threat they posed. But before she could utter a single word, the intruder spoke, a voice tinged with malice, its words a chilling echo in the stillness of the night. Hello, Emily, they murmured, their voice made the whole room feel cold. I've been waiting for you. Terror seized Emily's heart in a vice-like grip, her mind racing as she struggled to comprehend the horror unfolding before her. Who was this stranger, and what did they want with her? With trembling hands, Emily reached for the nearest object, a heavy bookend resting on her nightstand, and brandished it like a weapon, her instincts screaming at her to defend herself against this unknown assailant. But the intruder merely laughed, a hollow mocking sound that freaked Emily out. You can't stop me, Emily, they taunted, their voice dripping with malice. I'll always find a way in. And with that ominous proclamation, the intruder vanished into the darkness, leaving Emily alone with her fear and uncertainty. For the rest of the night, Emily huddled beneath her blankets, her senses on high alert for any sign of the intruder's return. But try as she might, sleep remained elusive, her mind consumed by the chilling certainty that this was only the beginning of a nightmare from which she could never truly awaken. And as the first rays of dawn broke across the horizon, illuminating the world with their golden light, Emily knew that she would never be able to erase the memory of the stranger's visit, or the terror that had accompanied it, from her mind. For in the darkness that lurked beyond the safety of her home, an unseen evil watched and waited, its hunger for her flesh insatiable. And as the days turned into weeks and the weeks turned into months, Emily found herself haunted by the memory of that fateful night, tormented by the knowledge that the stranger's presence lingered on. It was one of those nights when the road stretched endlessly before us, the darkness swallowing everything in its wake. Sarah and I had been driving for hours, our weary eyes straining to catch a glimpse of civilization amidst the desolate landscape. Finally, the neon glow of a roadside motel pierced through the night, offering a flicker of hope in the abyss. Pulling into the gravel lot, we exchanged tired smiles, relief washing over us as we stumbled out of the car. The motel appeared like any other, its faded sign casting an eerie glow over the deserted parking area. Ignoring the faint sense of unease gnawing at the edges of my mind, I helped Sarah gather our bags, eager to escape the suffocating confines of the vehicle. The lobby greeted us with a musty smell, the air thick with the scent of old cigarettes and stale coffee. A tired-looking clerk glanced up from behind the reception desk, his expression blank as he handed over a set of keys without a word. We exchanged uneasy glances, the silence hanging heavy in the air as we made our way to our assigned room. Inside, the walls seemed to close in around us, the dim lighting casting long shadows across the threadbare carpet. Sarah flicked on the television in an attempt to dispel the oppressive atmosphere, but the images flickering across the screen only served to heighten our unease. As the night wore on, sleep eluded us, the minutes dragging by in agonizing slowness. Each creak of the floorboard sent shivers down my spine, my senses on high alert for any sign of danger. It was then that I heard it, the muffled sounds of movement coming from the room next door. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as I strained to listen. Sarah's hand found mine in the darkness, her grip tight with fear. We held our breath, waiting for the noise to subside, but it only grew louder, more frantic with each passing moment. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized what was happening. The person next door wasn't just a weary traveler seeking shelter for the night. They were someone far more sinister, someone who had something to hide. I glanced at Sarah, her wide eyes reflecting my own fear. Without a word, we made a silent pact to leave, to get as far away from this place as possible. But as I reached for the door, a sudden knock shattered the silence, sending shockwaves through the room. We froze, our breath catching in our throats as the sound echoed through the empty space. It came again, louder this time, more insistent. With trembling hands, I edged towards the door, every fiber of my being screaming for me to run, to hide, to do anything but open it. 
but curiosity got the better of me, and against my better judgment, I turned the handle, the door creaking open to reveal the darkness beyond. And there, standing in the dim glow of the hallway, was a figure cloaked in shadow. My heart plummeted as I recognized the face, the face of a man whose image had been plastered across every news outlet for weeks. He was a fugitive, a dangerous criminal on the run from the law. Before I could react, he lunged forward, his eyes wild with desperation. I stumbled backward, my mind racing as I fumbled for the words to scream to plead for help. But it was too late. In an instant, his hands were around my throat, squeezing the life from me with a strength born of desperation. I gasped for air, my vision swimming as darkness closed in around me. And as I struggled against the iron grip of the fugitive, panic surged through my veins, adrenaline coursing through my body. Sarah's terrified screams filled the air, a symphony of fear that echoed off the walls of our cramped motel room. With every ounce of strength I could muster, I fought back, clawing at his face, desperate to break free from his grasp. But he was relentless, his grip unyielding as he bore down on me with all the fury of a cornered animal. In the chaos, time seemed to stand still, each second stretching out into an eternity of agony and terror. I could feel the life draining from me, my lungs burning for air, my vision narrowing to a pinprick of light. But just when I thought all hope was lost, a sudden burst of noise shattered the silence, the sound of heavy footsteps echoing down the hallway. The fugitive froze, his grip loosening for the briefest of moments as he glanced towards the door. It was our chance, our fleeting opportunity to escape the clutches of death. With a surge of adrenaline, I wrenched myself free from his grasp, my body screaming in protest as I stumbled towards the door. Sarah was right behind me, her hand gripping mine with a strength born of sheer determination. Together we raced down the dimly lit hallway, the sound of our pounding footsteps echoing off the walls. Behind us the fugitive roared in frustration, his footsteps thundering after us as he gave chase. But we were faster, fueled by the primal instinct to survive, to escape the nightmare that had unfolded before us. With every step, the world seemed to blur around us, the hallway stretching out endlessly before our eyes. But just when it felt like we couldn't run any further, we burst through the doors of the motel, the cool night air washing over us like a bomb. For a moment, we stood there, gasping for breath, our hearts pounding in our chests, but there was no time to rest, no time to catch our breath. We had to keep running, to put as much distance between us and the fugitive as possible. With newfound resolve, we raced into the darkness, our footsteps echoing off the deserted streets as we disappeared into the night. And as we fled into the unknown, I knew that this would be a night we would never forget. A night that would haunt us for the rest of our days. Story 2 as I drove down the winding country roads, the sense of isolation grew with every passing mile. It was a journey to a distant family reunion, a trip I had embarked upon with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. But as the sun dipped below the horizon and darkness descended upon the landscape, my excitement waned, replaced by a growing sense of unease. The GPS signal flickered and died, leaving me stranded in the depths of the unknown. Panic clawed at the edges of my mind as I realized I was lost the unfamiliar surroundings stretching out before me like a labyrinth of uncertainty. It was then that I spotted the flickering neon sign of a roadside motel, its glow cutting through the darkness like a beacon of hope. Relieved, I pulled into the gravel lot, the crunch of tires beneath me echoing in the silence of the night. Stepping out of the car, I shivered in the cool night air, a sense of foreboding settling over me like a heavy blanket. The motel loomed before me, its facade weathered and worn, the windows dark and empty. With a hesitant step, I approached the reception desk, my footsteps echoing off the linoleum floors. Behind the counter stood a man, his features obscured by the dim lighting of the lobby. He greeted me with a toothy grin, his eyes glinting with an unsettling intensity. Welcome, traveler, he said, his voice smooth as silk. What brings you to our humble establishment? I hesitated, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. Something about the man set my teeth on edge, a sense of wrongness that lingered in the air like a foul odor. Just passing through, I replied, my voice betraying none of the unease swirling within me. I'm in need of a room for the night. The man's grin widened, revealing a row of yellowed teeth. 
He reached beneath the counter, producing a set of keys with a flourish. Of course, of course, he said, his voice dripping with honeyed charm. We have just the room for you. Follow me. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I trailed after him down a dimly lit hallway, the shadows closing in around us like hungry predators. He led me to a room at the far end, its door flanked by peeling paint and cracked plaster. Here we are, he said, his grin never faltering. I hope you find everything to your liking. I forced a smile, the weight of his gaze bearing down on me like a physical presence. As he turned to leave, I caught sight of something glinting on the shelves behind him, a collection of trinkets and baubles that seemed out of place in such a rundown motel. What's all this? I asked, gesturing towards the display with a flick of my hand. The man's grin faltered for a fraction of a second, a flicker of something dark passing over his features before it was gone, replaced by that same sickly smile. Oh, just odds and ends, he replied, his voice tight. Things left behind by previous guests. I nodded, though the unease in the pit of my stomach only grew stronger. With a final nod, the man disappeared down the hallway, leaving me alone in the darkness. The room felt like a tomb, the air thick with tension and the faint scent of decay. Every fiber of my being screamed for me to run, to escape the clutches of the sinister motel manager who now stood before me, his presence suffocating. I swallowed hard, my throat dry as sandpaper as I struggled to find my voice. What do you want? I managed to croak out the words barely audible in the oppressive silence. The manager's grin widened, his eyes gleaming with a madness that sent a shiver down my spine. Oh, just a little something to remember you by, he said, his voice dripping with malice. Before I could react, he lunged forward, his hands reaching out to grab me with a strength that belied his wiry frame. I stumbled backward, my heart hammering in my chest as I fought to break free from his grasp. But he was relentless, his grip like iron as he pinned me against the wall, his foul breath hot against my skin. Panic surged through me, a primal instinct to survive driving me to fight back with every ounce of strength I possessed. With a surge of adrenaline, I lashed out, striking him with all the force I could muster. He staggered back, his grin faltering for the briefest of moments as surprise flickered across his face. Seizing the opportunity, I bolted for the door, my heart pounding in my ears as I raced down the dimly lit hallway. Behind me I could hear the manager's enraged shouts echoing off the walls, his footsteps thundering after me like the pounding of a drum. I didn't dare look back, my only thought to escape, to put as much distance between myself and that cursed motel as possible. I burst through the doors into the cool night air, the rush of freedom washing over me like a tidal wave. But even as I fled into the darkness I knew that the nightmare was far from over. The memory of the manager's twisted grin haunted my dreams, a specter of fear that lingered in the shadows of my mind. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being hunted by something dark and malevolent. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination, that the events of that night were nothing more than a fevered dream born of fear and exhaustion. But deep down, I knew the truth. The motel manager was real, and he was out there, waiting, biding his time until the moment was right to strike again. And as the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, I lived in constant fear, always looking over my shoulder, always waiting for the moment when he would return to finish what he had started. But he never did. Instead, he remained a shadowy presence in the back of my mind, a reminder of the horrors that lurked in the darkness, waiting to ensnare the unwary and the unsuspecting. And as the years passed, I learned to live with the fear, to accept it as a part of who I was. But deep down, I knew that I would never truly be free, that the memory of that night would haunt me for the rest of my days, a reminder of the fragility of life and the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of our reality. Story 3 The night was thick with silence as I pulled into the motel parking lot, the neon sign flickering eerily in the darkness. Exhaustion weighed heavily on my shoulders, my eyelids heavy from hours of driving. I longed for nothing more than to sink into bed and let sleep claim me. The motel itself was a rundown affair, its paint peeling and its windows boarded up. But in the dead of night, with no other options in sight, it seemed like a sanctuary. 
ignoring the faint sense of unease prickling at the back of my mind. I gathered my bags and made my way to the reception desk. The clerk behind the counter eyed me warily, his gaze lingering a moment too long. I forced a smile, trying to ignore the chill that crept down my spine. Just one room for the night, please, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. The clerk nodded, his expression unreadable as he handed me a set of keys. Room 12, he said simply, his voice devoid of warmth. With a sense of trepidation, I made my way down the dimly lit hallway, the air heavy with the scent of mildew and decay. Room 12 loomed before me, its door ominously ajar. With a shaky hand, I pushed it open and stepped inside. The room was small and cramped, the air stale and musty. I sighed, trying to shake off the feeling of unease that clung to me like a second skin. But as I settled onto the bed, a strange sound echoed through the walls, faint and distant. At first I dismissed it as the creaking of old pipes or the rustling of leaves in the wind. But as the night wore on, the noise grew louder, more insistent. It was a rhythmic thumping, like the sound of someone pounding on a door. Curiosity gnawed at me, driving me to investigate. With a sense of trepidation, I made my way to the door and pressed my ear against it, straining to hear over the pounding of my heart. And that's when I heard it, a woman's voice, muffled and desperate, pleading for help. My blood ran cold as the realization sank in. Someone was in trouble, someone was in danger, and I was the only one who could help. Without a second thought, I flung open the door and dashed into the hallway, the sound of my footsteps echoing off the walls. The noise led me to the room across the hall, its door cracked open just enough to allow a sliver of light to spill out into the darkness. With trembling hands, I pushed the door open and stepped inside. The room was dimly lit, the air heavy with the stench of fear. And in the corner, huddled on the floor, was a woman, her eyes wide with terror as she stared up at me. Before she could speak, a voice cut through the silence, cold and menacing. What do you think you're doing? It said, sending a shiver down my spine. I turned to see a man standing in the doorway, his features twisted into a sneer. He was tall and imposing, his eyes dark and unfathomable. In that moment, I knew that he was the source of the woman's fear, the one who held her captive in this dingy motel room. But I refused to back down, refused to let fear dictate my actions. With every ounce of courage I possessed, I stepped forward and confronted him, my voice steady despite the hammering of my heart. Let her go, I said my words ringing out like a challenge in the stillness of the room. For a moment there was silence, the tension thick enough to cut with a knife. And then, with a suddenness that left me reeling, the man lunged forward, his hands reaching out to grab me. I stumbled backward, my heart pounding in my chest as I fought to keep him at bay. But he was relentless, his grip like iron as he pinned me against the wall, his breath hot against my skin. In that moment, I knew that I was in over my head, that I had stumbled into a situation far more dangerous than I could have imagined. But I refused to give up, refused to let fear consume me. With a surge of adrenaline, I fought back, striking out with all the strength I could muster. But the man was too strong, too powerful, and I knew that I was no match for him. And then, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, the man leaned in close, his breath hot against my ear as he whispered the words that would haunt me for the rest of my days. You're going to wish you were dead, he said, his voice a low, menacing growl. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I knew that he was right. The horrors that awaited me in that motel room would forever scar me, a reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of our reality. Days turned into nights and nights into an endless cycle of terror within the confines of the desolate motel room. Time seemed to stretch on endlessly, each passing moment marked by the relentless torment inflicted upon me by the man and the clerk. They reveled in their power over me, their cruelty knowing no bounds as they subjected me to unspeakable horrors. But amidst the darkness, a flicker of defiance burned within me. Despite the overwhelming odds stacked against me, I clung to the hope of escape like a lifeline refusing to surrender to the despair that threatened to consume me. With each passing day, I searched for any opportunity to break free from my captor's grasp, to find a weakness in their defenses that I could exploit. But they were vigilant, their watchful eyes never straying far from me, 
their every move calculated to ensure that I remained firmly under their control. Yet even in the depths of despair, a glimmer of hope remained. It came in the form of the woman who had shared my ordeal, her unwavering resolve a source of strength in the face of adversity. Together, we forged a bond born of shared suffering, united in our determination to survive. As the days stretched on, we whispered words of encouragement to one another, our voices a beacon of defiance in the suffocating darkness of the motel room. We shared our hopes and fears, our dreams of freedom serving as a balm to soothe our battered souls. But despite our best efforts, escape remained elusive, each attempt thwarted by the man and the clerk, their cruelty escalating with each passing day as they sought to break our spirits and crush our will to resist. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, a glimmer of opportunity presented itself. It came in the form of a momentary lapse in vigilance, a brief window of opportunity that we seized with both hands. With hearts pounding and adrenaline coursing through our veins, the woman and I sprang into action, our movements swift and sure as we overpowered our captors and made a break for freedom. It was a desperate bid for survival, fueled by the primal instinct to escape at any cost. But even as we raced down the dimly lit hallway, our footsteps echoing off the walls, we knew that our journey was far from over. The man and the clerk were in hot pursuit, their shouts of rage echoing in the corridors behind us. We sprinted down the narrow hallway, our hearts thundering in our chests, adrenaline pumping through our veins. With each step, the distant sound of our pursuers grew louder, driving us onward with a frantic urgency. As we reached the end of the hallway, a shadow loomed before us, blocking our path. It was the clerk, his face contorted in a malevolent sneer. Going somewhere, are we? He taunted, his voice dripping with malice. But we refused to be deterred. With a fierce determination, we barreled past him, pushing through the darkness and into the night beyond. The cool night air washed over us, a welcome relief after the suffocating confines of the motel. We ran blindly into the darkness, guided only by the distant glimmer of streetlights in the distance. With each passing moment, our hope of escape grew stronger, driving us forward through the inky blackness of the night. But our freedom was short-lived. Just as we thought we had outpaced our pursuers, they descended upon us like vengeful shadows, their hands reaching out to drag us back into the darkness. With a sense of dread, we realized that we had been led into a trap, that our escape had been nothing more than a cruel illusion. And as the man and the clerk closed in around us, their laughter ringing in our ears, we knew that our nightmare was far from over. For days, we were subjected to unspeakable horrors, our bodies broken and our spirits shattered by the relentless cruelty of our captors. We existed in a nightmarish limbo, trapped in a never-ending cycle of pain and despair. But even in the darkest depths of our torment, a glimmer of hope remained. It was the knowledge that we were not alone, that we had each other to lean on in our darkest hour. And together we clung to that flicker of hope, determined to survive against all odds. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, salvation came in the form of a brave soul who stumbled upon our prison of despair. With courage and determination, they fought back against our captors, driving them back into the shadows from whence they came. In the chaos of our rescue, we were whisked away to safety, our bodies battered and bruised, but our spirits unbroken. And as we emerged from the darkness into the light of day, we vowed to never forget the horrors we had endured, to honor the memory of those who had fallen victim to the darkness that lurked within the walls of that forsaken motel. In the heart of summer, four friends, Lisa, Jake, Sarah, and Mike, decided to embark on a road trip that would take them through the picturesque landscapes of the American Southwest. With a packed car, they set out on a journey filled with laughter, adventure, and the promise of unforgettable memories. Their chosen route would lead them through desolate stretches of highway that wound through vast, arid deserts, isolated and remote. As they drove, the scenery transformed from bustling cities to barren wilderness, and the open road seemed to stretch on forever. Lisa, the driver, navigated with precision as Jake, her partner, manned the stereo. Their laughter filled the car, and they sang along to their favorite tunes, their spirits high as they embraced the freedom of the open road. Sarah and Mike in the back seat shared jokes and snacks, their faces illuminated by the ever-present glow of their smartphones. 
Hours passed and the group marveled at the stunning vistas that unfolded before them. The landscape was simultaneously awe-inspiring and desolate, a stark reminder of the vastness of nature. But as the sun dipped below the horizon, the realization dawned that they were venturing deeper into the isolated desert, with no signs of civilization in sight. We should probably find a gas station soon, Lisa remarked, her eyes scanning the barren landscape. Jake consulted the map and his smartphone, trying to determine the nearest gas station. There should be one a bit further ahead, but it's hard to tell exactly how far. With growing concern, they continued driving hoping to reach the elusive gas station before their fuel gauge reached empty. But the hours passed and their situation grew more precarious. The landscape became increasingly desolate with no signs of life or infrastructure. The fuel gauge continued its relentless descent, and anxiety filled the car. Jake's phone lost signal, leaving them without GPS or a means to contact anyone for help. The group exchanged worried glances, realizing they were in a dire predicament. It's been hours since we saw a gas station, Lisa said, her voice tinged with panic. Mike, trying to stay positive, tried to reassure the group. There's got to be something up ahead. We'll make it. As the last dregs of fuel were siphoned from the tank, the engine sputtered and died. The car coasted to a halt on the side of the highway, surrounded by an endless expanse of desert under the moonlight. Desperation hung heavy in the air as they stepped out of the car and looked around. The silence was dark, broken only by the howling of the wind through the barren landscape. We can't stay out here, Sarah said, her voice trembling. Mike's face was grim as he surveyed the empty highway. We'll have to start walking and look for help. Maybe we'll find a gas station or a passing vehicle. With no other option, they set off on foot, clutching their flashlights and whatever supplies they had in the car. The desert night was unforgiving, the temperature dropping rapidly, and the haunting emptiness of the landscape added to their growing fear. Hours turned into a seemingly endless trek, and their energy waned. Sarah and Lisa shivered in the cold desert air, their feet aching from the miles they'd walked. Their hope began to fade, replaced by a gnawing dread that they might never find help in this desolation. Suddenly, Mike spotted a distant glow on the horizon. Look, there's a light. It could be a gas station or a building. Let's go. Renewed with hope, they quickened their pace, heading toward the distant light. But as they approached, they realized it was not a gas station, but a solitary, dilapidated building that seemed abandoned for years. The flickering neon sign that once declared Oasis Diner hung precariously, its letters missing or askew. Reluctantly, they entered the diner, their flashlights revealing a scene frozen in time. Dust-covered tables and chairs, shattered glass, and tattered menus were strewn about the interior. It was a haunting sight that left them with a sense of foreboding. Mike called out, but there was no response. The place seemed deserted, and its silence was scary. With no other options, they decided to search for any supplies that might help them get back on the road. As they explored the diner, they discovered an old cash register, empty except for a few decaying dollar bills. In the kitchen, they found a pantry with canned goods and bottled water, which would sustain them for a short while. The group debated whether to spend the night in the abandoned diner or continue their journey on foot. The decision was fraught with uncertainty, but the chilling isolation of the desert night outside made the choice clear. They decided to stay and rest before resuming their quest for help at first light. In the diner's back room, they huddled together, trying to find comfort and warmth. They shared stories and jokes to lighten the mood, but the strange surroundings and their dire situation hung heavily over them. Sleep proved elusive as the hours crept by in torturous silence. The sense of isolation weighed on them, and their growing anxiety made each creak of the abandoned building seem like an impending threat. Just as they were beginning to doze off, a haunting sound echoed through the diner, a sound that sent a cold feeling down their backs. It was a faint, creepy melody, like an old music box playing a twisted lullaby. The group's eyes met, their faces pale with fear. Did you hear that? Jake whispered, his voice trembling. Sarah nodded, her eyes wide with terror. It's coming from the kitchen. Mike, with a flashlight in hand, ventured into the dark kitchen. The others followed, their hearts pounding as the haunting melody grew louder. 
As they entered the kitchen, they discovered the source of the sound. An old music box on the counter, its cracked lid slightly ajar. The music box played its haunting tune with a life of its own, its winding key untouched. The melody had an ethereal quality, as if it were beckoning them to some dark, mysterious place. Terrified and unable to comprehend the phenomenon, they watched as the lid of the music box slowly closed, its music fading into silence. Goosebumps covered their skin, and a sense of dread weighed heavily on their hearts. Before they could react, a figure emerged from the shadows of the kitchen, its presence sending shockwaves of fear through their bodies. It was a haggard, emaciated man, dressed in rags, his eyes hollow and empty. The man's voice croaked as he whispered, You should have left when you had the chance. The group retreated in terror, their hearts racing as they realized they were not alone in the abandoned diner. The man's ghastly appearance and his cryptic words left them paralyzed with fear. Their instincts kicked in and they ran for the exit, fleeing the diner in a panic. The night had grown colder and the desert was an even more inhospitable place than they had thought. They were filled with a deep sense of dread, unsure of what horrors awaited them in the desolate darkness. As they ventured further into the desert, the echoes of the haunting melody and the spectral presence of the man lingered in their minds, haunting their every step. The night was unrelenting, and their fear grew with each passing moment. Their desperate journey seemed endless, and they were tormented by the belief that they were being pursued by an unseen force. The desert landscape stretched out before them, an unforgiving expanse that offered no solace. Just as exhaustion threatened to overcome them, they spotted the distant glow of headlights. A vehicle was approaching, and they waved their arms frantically, their voices hoarse as they cried for help. The vehicle slowed to a stop and a lone figure stepped out. It was a truck driver, a grizzled man with a weathered face who listened to their story with a mixture of concern and skepticism. We ran out of gas and ended up in an abandoned diner, Lisa explained, her voice shaking. We heard a music box playing by itself, and there was a man there who said we should have left. The truck driver's expression darkened and he glanced toward the horizon. You're lucky I found you. That abandoned diner has a dark history. They say it's haunted by the souls of those who got lost in the desert and never found their way out. With a sense of urgency, the truck driver offered to take them to the nearest town, where they could get the help they needed. As they piled into the truck, their relief was palpable, and they couldn't escape the feeling that they had narrowly escaped a horrific fate. Story 2 In the heart of summer, Mark set out on a cross-country journey to visit his family. The open road stretched before him, inviting him to embark on an adventure filled with excitement and the promise of reunions with loved ones. Armed with a map, a trusty old car, and a sense of adventure, he headed out, leaving behind the bustling city for the wide expanse of the countryside. As Mark drove through picturesque landscapes and quiet towns, he marveled at the diversity of the country. The journey was marked by changing scenery, from lush forests to rolling hills and dusty highways. Along the way, he exchanged pleasantries with friendly strangers, visited quaint diners and admired roadside attractions. The trip was proving to be everything he had hoped for. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Mark found himself in a remote stretch of the highway, far from any signs of civilization. The desolation of the area was almost sinister, with miles of empty roads surrounded by an expansive wilderness. As he drove, he noticed that his fuel gauge was approaching empty, and the nearest gas station was still miles away. Growing increasingly anxious, Mark kept an eye on the fuel gauge, hoping that he could reach the gas station in time. But as the needle inched closer to E, a sense of unease settled in. He knew he was in a remote area, and the idea of running out of gas in the middle of nowhere was unsettling. The car's engine sputtered, and Mark watched in dread as the fuel gauge finally hit E. The engine died, and he coasted to a stop on the side of the highway. Panic surged through him as he realized the predicament he was in, stranded in a desolate place with no one in sight. Mark's initial reaction was to call for help, but to his dismay, he discovered that his cell phone had no signal in the remote location. He felt a sense of isolation and vulnerability, and his mind raced as he tried to figure out what to do next. Just as he was considering starting the long walk to the gas station, a vehicle approached from behind. A pickup truck pulled up, 
and Mark watched with a mixture of relief and caution as a burly man in his 40s stepped out. The man wore a worn flannel shirt, and his face was obscured by a scruffy beard. He had a gruff appearance, and Mark couldn't quite read his intentions. Car trouble? The man asked, his voice a gravelly baritone. Mark nodded, trying to sound as composed as possible. Yeah, I ran out of gas. I was just about to start walking to the gas station. The man's response was a slow, almost menacing smile that made Mark freeze. No need for that, friend. I can help you out. Reluctantly, Mark accepted the man's offer of assistance. The stranger retrieved a gas can from his truck and began pouring the fuel into Mark's tank. As he worked, he engaged Mark in conversation, asking about his journey and his destination. Mark was polite but guarded, sensing something unsettling about the man. There was an air of intensity and a strange gleam in the stranger's eyes that made him uncomfortable. Still, he couldn't afford to turn down the help, especially in such a remote area. As the man finished refueling the car, Mark tried to offer him some money as a token of appreciation. The stranger waved it away with a dismissive gesture. No need for that. I'm just glad I could help out a fellow traveler. Mark felt a growing sense of unease as the man returned to his truck. He thanked the stranger and got back into his car, eager to leave the desolate stretch of highway behind. However, as he pulled away, he noticed the stranger getting into his truck as well, and an uncomfortable feeling gnawed at his gut. Mark couldn't shake the sensation that he was being followed. He tried to rationalize it, telling himself that the man might be going in the same direction, but the unease persisted. The stranger's presence and the strange conversation they had shared haunted him as he drove on. Miles passed and the highway seemed to stretch on forever. The stranger remained a constant presence in Mark's rearview mirror. Never too close, but never too far either. The paranoia grew, and he couldn't escape the nagging feeling that something was horribly wrong. To put his mind at ease, Mark decided to exit the highway at the next opportunity, hoping to lose the stranger on the back roads. He made a quick turn, leaving the main road behind, and tried to find a place to lay low. As he navigated the winding roads, he glanced in his rearview mirror, relieved to see that the stranger was nowhere in sight. Mark drove for several more miles, feeling a renewed sense of freedom. It seemed that he had successfully eluded his unwanted companion. He decided to stop at a nearby rest area to gather his thoughts and plan his next move. But just as he pulled into the empty rest area and parked his car, a sense of dread washed over him. The stranger's pickup truck had pulled in behind him, and the man emerged from the vehicle, wearing the same scary smile as before. Mark's heart raced as he realized the stranger had been following him all along. He considered his options, but the isolation of the rest area left him with few choices. The stranger approached his car, and Mark locked the doors, his hand trembling as he reached for his cell phone, still hoping for a signal. The stranger tapped on the window, his grin growing wider and more unsettling. You tried to lose me back there, didn't you? That's not very nice. Fear coursed through Mark's veins, and he had no doubt that the stranger's intentions were far from benign. Desperation gripped him, and he reached for the car's ignition, preparing to make a hasty escape. But before he could react, the stranger produced a knife from his pocket, its blade glinting in the dim light. He began to slash at the tires of Mark's car, rendering it immobile. Panic and terror consumed Mark as he realized the dire situation he was in. With his car incapacitated, Mark had no choice but to open the window and face the menacing stranger. The man's smile had transformed into a sadistic grin and he leaned in closer, the glint of the knife blade dancing in his eyes. You shouldn't have tried to run, friend, the stranger whispered, his voice dripping with malice. Just as Mark feared the worst, the rest area's silence was shattered by the distant wail of sirens. The approaching police car's flashing lights painted the scene with a sense of hope. The stranger, realizing the imminent danger, retreated and fled to his pickup truck. The police car skidded to a stop and officers apprehended the stranger who struggled violently but was eventually subdued. Mark's heart pounded with a mixture of relief and gratitude. The police explained that the man was a known criminal with a history of violence and assault. They had been tracking him for some time and Mark's call for help had led them to the rest area just in the nick of time. Story 3 David and Sarah, a married couple, set out on a romantic getaway to celebrate their anniversary. 
they decided to explore the less traveled back roads of the countryside, hoping to discover hidden gems and make memories together. The open road stretched before them, and they were filled with anticipation and excitement. The journey was punctuated by laughter, heartfelt conversations, and moments of pure happiness. They cherished the serenity of the open road, taking turns behind the wheel, and stopping at quaint roadside diners and antique shops. One evening they found themselves on a winding, desolate road, far from the bustling towns they had grown accustomed to. The remoteness of the area was almost creepy, with dense forests on either side of the road and no other vehicles in sight. As the day waned and the sun dipped below the horizon, David noticed that their fuel gauge was nearing empty. Sarah glanced at the gauge and said, We should look for a gas station soon. The nearest town should have one. With growing concern, they continued driving, their eyes scanning the forested landscape for any signs of civilization. But as the fuel gauge inched closer to E, a sense of unease began to settle in. David muttered, We're running low on gas. I hope we find a station soon. Just when their anxiety was reaching its peak, they spotted a small road sign that pointed to a nearby gas station. Their relief was palpable as they followed the signs to the station, anticipating a chance to refuel and continue their journey. However, when they reached the gas station, their optimism turned to dismay. It was dark and abandoned, a relic from a bygone era. The pumps were old and rusted with no sign of life around. It became clear that the station had been out of operation for years. With a heavy heart, David turned to Sarah and said, It looks like we'll have to find another station. Let's hope there's one not too far away. As they continued driving down the winding road, the forest grew denser and the sense of isolation more pronounced. Sarah, peering at the map, suggested that there was another gas station a few miles ahead. But as they drove on, there was still no sign of civilization and their fuel gauge inched perilously close to empty. The anxiety that had been simmering for some time began to boil over. David felt a growing sense of dread, but he didn't want to burden Sarah with his fear. Instead, he kept his eyes on the road, searching for any sign of hope. Just when they were beginning to lose hope, they spotted a small, secluded house nestled in the woods. A dim light glowed in one of the windows, offering a faint glimmer of hope. David decided to stop and ask for directions or help, thinking that maybe the residents would have a gas can or some information about the nearest station. As they approached the house, the atmosphere grew increasingly strange. The dense woods seemed to encroach upon the road, and the night was eerily silent. The sense of isolation was overwhelming, and it felt as if they were the only people for miles around. David parked the car in front of the house, and they hesitantly approached the front door. As they reached the porch, they could hear faint, muffled voices from inside and the sound of clinking utensils and dishes. Sarah whispered, It seems like a family dinner. Let's knock and ask for help. David agreed, and he raised his hand to knock on the door. But before he could do so, the door swung open with a creak, revealing a tall, imposing man in his fifties. He had a scruffy beard and intense, unblinking eyes that seemed to pierce through David and Sarah. Can I help you? The man asked, his voice steady but devoid of warmth. David stammered, We're out of gas and we were wondering if you could point us to the nearest gas station. We saw your lights on and thought maybe you could help. The man's smile was strained and his gaze never left them. I'm sorry, but we're quite far from the nearest gas station. You're welcome to come inside and wait for morning, but we can't offer any gas. As they entered the house, the weird atmosphere only intensified. The interior was strange, and the dining room was filled with people, their faces blank and devoid of emotion. It was as if the entire family had been frozen in time, trapped in a strange tableau. The man introduced David and Sarah to his family, but there was something deeply unsettling about the encounter. The family members barely acknowledged their presence, and their dinner table was laid out with strange, unappetizing dishes. The air was heavy with silence, punctuated only by the sound of utensils scraping against plates. As David and Sarah sat at the table, the man's demeanor grew more unnerving. He continued to stare at them, his gaze unyielding. You must be hungry after your journey. Please help yourselves to dinner. David and Sarah glanced at the peculiar dishes before them, 
unable to hide their discomfort. The food appeared to be a mix of unidentifiable ingredients and an odd odor permeated the room. They politely declined the offer, but the man insisted, his insistence growing increasingly unsettling. Hours passed and the couple found themselves trapped in a strange, unsettling limbo. The family remained unresponsive, their strange tableau unchanged. David and Sarah felt like unwelcome guests, and the fear that had been simmering beneath the surface grew more pronounced. Finally, as the clock approached midnight, the man rose from the table and approached David and Sarah, his eyes fixed on them with an unsettling intensity. You can't leave. You must stay the night. Sarah's heart raced as she asked, why can't we leave? We just need to find a gas station. The man's response was chilling. You can't leave because you've seen too much. You know our secret, and we can't allow you to leave. In an instant, the situation escalated from strange to horrifying. The man's demeanor turned menacing, and his family members rose from the table, their blank faces now contorted with malevolence. David and Sarah realized that they were in grave danger. With adrenaline surging through their veins, they made a desperate attempt to escape. They bolted for the front door, but the man and his family pursued them with a chilling determination. As they raced back to their car, the night seemed to close in on them, the forest swallowing them whole. The pursuit was relentless, and the man's sinister laughter echoed through the woods. Desperation drove David and Sarah to their limits as they tried to outrun their pursuers. They sprinted through the thick woods, their breaths ragged and their hearts pounding. But the family's knowledge of the terrain gave them an advantage, and the pursuit showed no signs of relenting. Just when it seemed that David and Sarah were doomed, they stumbled upon a small cabin in the woods. The door was unlocked and they burst inside, barricading themselves in. The family members arrived moments later, their hands pounding on the door with a terrifying, relentless rhythm. David and Sarah huddled together, their hearts racing as they realized the direness of their situation. The cabin's interior was shrouded in darkness, and they knew that they had no means of escape. The scary sounds of the family members outside, their footsteps and taunts filled the cabin with dread. As the night wore on, the couple's hope began to fade. The sinister family showed no signs of giving up, and the relentless pursuit had become a nightmare that refused to end. The darkness was their only ally, but it couldn't shield them from the malevolent presence lurking just outside the cabin. In the darkness, David and Sarah clung to each other, their fear and desperation consuming them. The horrifying realization that they were trapped in a remote cabin with no hope of escape at the mercy of a sinister family was a nightmare come to life.